pass that to Jody. Oh, well. Jody, that's the construction rule just uh, that you guys approved last month. Ready? Okay. Without further ado, uh, it is 6.03 on Thursday, December 14th, and we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, the first uh, order of business is to receive public communications on any items not listed on the agenda. Anyone? Okay. Second uh, is public comments on, on agenda items, since we'll get to most of you pretty quickly then, probably. It's okay to go ahead and move on from that. The third is to uh, review the minutes from last meeting, which was November 9th, 2023. Any directors have any notes on those? I had a couple of really small ones, but I find it here. Let us know when you're ready. I'm ready. Whenever sure. y'all are. Is it Space Cowboy? What's that? Space Cowboy. What's the Wi Fi? Space Cowboy? Is that it? For this one? No. Um, I got to look it up. You want me to start? Yeah, if you have ones already, I'll find uh, them yeah. in a second. I have a couple. So on page of the packet, page uh, eight, under the TDS bulk trash pickup. Yes. Um, Jody, can you just confirm for me uh, that that I have the, the bulk trash collection was $7.36 per home, which came out to sixty one forty four dollars annually. And I don't think that that's quite what we discussed, just meaning the bulk pickup is already included. So what was the additional cost for? He quoted to do extra bulk pickup was his suggestion rather than do the Christmas tree. So, so each like house could do bulk pickup for you. Yeah. Um, I get to get the numbers, but I was thinking for that one, we just rephrase it. Yeah. You to know, say I'm we sorry, discussed that. Yeah. I didn't yeah, yeah. discuss the numbers. It's just like, what, what is it? What but was no, it? he, his suggestion was rather than the tree pickup to just get extra bulky trash, but knowing we don't use the bulky trash we already paid for. Yeah. So yeah, it would be didn't make a win sense. for them. Um, so you just want to strike that all together since it was never really an option for us anyway? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Unless you just so want to say we discussed pricing generally or something to that effect. Just on bulk trash or on the Christmas tree as well? No, on bulk trash, it, starting with the word bulk uh -huh. and, and going say, through. Um, we do, yeah. Um, going, I think going through the, the end of the parenthesis after annually, the first annually. Does that make sense just to strike that all together and say, uh, sorry, the and after yeah. that? Just Christmas tree collection is four dollars and fifty eight percent for home, and um, and then after perhaps before the period after the parenthesis after thirty eight twenty annually, mm -hmm. we can we can add something to the effect of it was uh, individual pickup was also discussed. The different options were discussed alongside the Christmas tree pickup. I think it's the easiest way to phrase it. I think it gave me a couple different price options. Do you want me to call that out as different were for bulk trash? Just different? Nah, just different options. Okay. Different options, yeah, it's fine. Because that's the option that we settled on finally anyway. The, okay. The one that still remains in there. All right. Uh, the very next thing that I have is just on page nine of the packet. Um, and it's simple. It's just uh, on under 10. Yes. Uh, there's a period right after the word government. I don't think it belongs. And it should roll right into you government correct. code requirements. Thank you. That's all I have. So I had one under more of a question okay. under facilities for C. Um, we discussed the new rule a little bit and then near the like two thirds of the way through, there's a comment. The board noted the main objective of the rule is to ensure protection of groundwater by minimizing runoff. I think it should be something to prevent. Oh. 
prevent, prevent runoff. Permanent runoff or, okay. I don't think minimizing is the right word there, though, right? Okay. We want to prevent it. Yeah, probably. Something, something to that effect. All right. That was it, and then I had the follow-on comment with yours, Terry. That was it. Okay. That was it. Is there any other comments about the minutes? Anything? Um, so I move, I motion that we approve the minutes as uh, amended this evening. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving on to three uh, facilities. Uh, sorry, reports and committee matters. We'll start with facilities committee. Um, so, uh, Blake, and just a general landscape report. Anything to anything to report? Anything going on in the neighborhood we should be aware of? Okay. Okay. Any discussions this time of year about the landscape services contract? Nothing to bring up. We move on to uh, 4C, district's construction rules, deposit rules. So I did just sign and I see Jody's uh, attesting. Yep. I think it's called attesting to it now. Um, so I think we have it. I only comment when I reread it. Um, and this is going to be an issue no matter what we do. But where we say projects over 100,000, and there's no way to word this perfectly, but people are going to break it up into two projects of 50. Like you can see how people are going to game in a bit. And I don't know, I think what we have is good enough, but I don't know whether we want to give thought to how we capture sort of the spirit of the rule that if you're doing a big project, I don't want a quote for the first floor renovation and one for the second. Yeah. You say it doesn't meet the 100. Right. Like, but you can leave, you can lawyer over lawyer the document too. So I don't know what yeah. the best solution is. So just something we should maybe think about whether or not we want to, I have a feeling the first couple of times it comes up where someone's going to potentially use mm -hmm. that type of thing to circumvent it, where part of the rental is X not dollars, part of it is Y, the two separate projects, they're not 100 in total, I'm not going to give you the deposit. Like what would be an example? You said like first floor and second floor? Well, that was that. Like someone may be doing, I, see, I can see it everywhere I go around the neighborhood, there's houses getting ripped apart. Mm -hmm. um, there's one though where the yard is ripped apart, all dirt, and they're renovating inside. Right. And I could separate that into two different courts. There's another one where it's just the inside, and they're gutting it basically. I, I don't think it's so much quote. It's how much contemporaneous work, the well, value of the contemporaneous work that the person is performing on their property. Which would be fine, but we don't say that in the bid. We say project over a hundred or something to that effect. Okay. So it's still a project. The whole thing is a project, even if you have multiple contracts. You were going to get pushback from well, residents. Okay. So, uh, how much do we want to clarify the language? I guess. I see. Do we want to get in front of it, or do we want to wait until? Can I see the language again? Well, I think you, I, I think if you're talking about an, a lagging, a lagging kind of analysis, and it's and actually, I'm sorry, it's, on page it's in the packet. Yeah, it's for. Um, if you're talking about like a lagging indicator, you're not going to get that because you're not you're not going to know how many projects. We're a hundred thousand dollars and they split them in half. Section three. <coughs> section three A one. Now did anyone tell you about projects? Because there's there's two going around right beside my house that are definitely big enough. Did you go knock on the door? I am not. But it says any construction, renovation, improvement, or demolition of a construction site with an estimated construction renovation, improvement, or demolition cost of one hundred thousand dollars or more. I would read. No, I get the spirit of the rule, and I get we can word this however right. we want. People are still going to game it a bit, right. but I'm just. Why don't we Why don't we go with the approved rule? We'll table the discussion. If you guys can read through it individually, if you have some notes on, we can always come back. We can always amend it in in session. Yeah, I think we go with what we have. I, I don't right, agree it, with it that. is what we I have now, unless anybody's proposing. Yeah. Propos yeah. That's kind of what we talked about last time. It's the same. Mm -hmm. And it's what we signed. we signed last time. She just had a couple of things to change, I think the date or something on it. The date. And yeah. so I wanted to get um, y'all's signature on that so that it can be posted. And just a tag team on that. Part of whenever you make a rule, it has to be published in the newspaper. 
Uh, and so what you see in your packet, uh, mm. I think it's on page, I don't know if it's a numbered page in the packet, um, is the actual notice of the rule that's going into Lake Travis View. Oh, okay. And when does that go out? It will be two weeks. Uh, so it'll be the 20th and the 27th, which oh, will fit oh, okay. right with your uh, First of the new year. document that you were working on. Right. Yep. Where does this get posted? Just the This notice went yeah. in the newspaper. And that, that's the requirement, is it has to be published in the newspaper. Newspaper? Lake Travis View. And a, then I think the it's rule, a newspaper. Yeah. No, I, I don't. I don't <laughs> that's why there are <laughs> some that have spe more specific rules, yeah. but that one worked. Um, okay. So then uh, Nugget should get a copy and have a copy because his number is listed. And then we should post and need to post a copy on the website. Because this the, what we're publishing is saying you can get a copy from Nugget or you can get a copy on the website. Yeah, and it probably wouldn't hurt if there's real estate to probably post one out there for a few months too, right? If there's real estate out there. It's just several pages. Oh, in the on the one right here? Yeah. Well, I do know that there's some very outdated stuff inside 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 the fence. Inside the glass case inside the fence. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so, and I was going to address the communications uh, when we get down to communications, if it's better to do it here. Either way. Well, uh, so I'll just say we, we, we uh, the three of us kicked around a draft of, um, of uh, communication to go out to the neighborhood. And uh, I, think we, I think we settled on something really good and it should go out at least as soon as we get an opportunity to put it out. Probably coincide with the, the maybe the first, first publication. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. I think the 21st or whatever. Is that what you said, 21st? The 20th and the 27th. Okay, 20th. Because I believe the view posts, uh, publishes on Wednesdays. Can you get that paper online? Like the Lake Travis, what is it, Lake Travis? You, yeah, the Statesman pretty much owns, well. Everything. Yeah, the statesman owns everything, and then somebody owns the statesman. So it's not as simple as it used to be, yeah. where you could just call a human and talk to them on the phone. So <laughs> something <Okay>. else. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's probably behind a paywall anyway, isn't it? The statesman's behind the paywall. I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so anything further about the 4C district construction deposit rules? We put them in a settled that. Uh, projects. Uh, so 4D. Um, Josiah, could you just give us a rundown of the active projects and, and their completion? What you were able to complete in the last month of the approved ones that we did? Yeah. Um, the installation of plant material up at Rosaka and BK's has been completed on both sides. Um, all the material has been installed. Um, Drawing my plan on the other projects from last month. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, the Red Yaku adjacent to the center island has been completed as well. Uh, that would coincide with uh, the center island and doing the grass in the center island. That looks really good. Mm -hmm. um, just keeps it nice and clean. And then the sod. At the end of where we did the red yuccas was also installed and doing well also there. Jasmine, Jasmine, yeah, Jasmine, Jasmine Cap, extension right? on the south side of that. When you all put the new grass in like this, do you all change the watering schedule to bump it up so right. that it, hmm? Yeah, we adjusted it uh, accordingly with season and project and everything. So laying grass this time of year is beneficial because a lot less water to keep it hydrated because the evaporation rate is so much less, mm -hmm. especially with the nighttime temperatures where they're at. So, but yeah, we still do add an increased time. And we're free to do that. And we're, we'll talk in a few minutes about uh, the potable water situation mm -hmm. and some of the proposals that are on the table for tonight uh, and how we'll, we, uh, we think that we can do it. But if it becomes an issue, then we can always apply for an exception to the WTCP way for the restriction. The watering restrictions, uh, just because it's, uh, I mean, it's uh, considered new, you know, new landscaping, and there's an mm -hmm. exception for that if you <laughs> apply for it and they review it. So, 
Um, any other ones that you, uh, that you any, any that are current, currently still going? Everything's finished. Oh, right, yeah. So kayak rack cleanup is done? Yeah. So there aren't any proposals that are-, are, uh, no, are that's outstanding. Everything okay. Has been okay. And they've all been invoiced and they're in our packets. I believe so. Yeah, I thought I saw that too. Okay. Yeah, there were a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different proposals. And I was gonna, if you needed it, run run what they were called. But if they're all done, then I'll just say they were all done. Yep. And they're and then in invoiced as well. So okay. Uh moving on to seven D, new seven D two new proposals. Um so uh, there are a few new proposals that hopefully the director's got an opportunity to review in the packets. Um, they, we primarily focus this month on the Carlsbad, Carlsbad Upper Pond and Lower Pond, which uh, has anyone been around there lately? It's in really bad shape, really bad shape. And just as a combination of a number of things over the last couple of years. Um, but we did get a proposal. I'm looking at one right now called Carlsbad Sod Southeast Side. Mm -hmm. And this is this is a, a, a hill, right? It's and it's resodding a hill, um, and then and then there's some additional things in there as well. There's a, some irrigation that needs to be um, expanded, and and some irrigation work that's included there as well. Um, obviously, with the um, erosion that's taking place, they need to do a, a good deal of soil uh, compost, um, etc., for the new sod to to take root. And then there has also been discussion around um, how do we keep kids off of it? How do we keep people from walking on that side and sliding down the hill and taking the side with them? Um, and so what I would like to do, and, and um, Director Mincy is also uh, in agreement with me. I would like to propose that we, uh, or sorry, I'd like to motion that we, that we approve the Carlsbad sod southeast side um, with a uh, an additional in addition to the, the the cost that's on the proposal an additional do not exceed so that we can come up with some solution to keep keep kids and you know adults and whatever off of the sod while it grows and You're just gonna stake it and put rope we're thinking right? yes we're like thinking that? of decorative stakes and rope um, that's a little more that's temporary for sure but a little more than just a orange construction fence there for six months. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have not had the opportunity to vet out all of the different options necessarily. So we're gonna, um, our plan was to, uh, to propose. And so I'll motion that we approve this proposal titled Carlsbad Sod Southeast Side uh, in the, for the value of a do not exceed uh, 1000 or sorry, $17,500. Can I ask a question real quick before course, yeah. we do that? Yeah. Um, it, trying to keep people off of it. I'm just wondering if we ought to utilize that same sort of material that they used on that, is it called BK cutoff, whatever it is on this side of the Galleria. If you're driving west, now all that area, they, they put down this netting stuff. Yeah, we discussed that. So the netting stuff is not only for it for to make it aesthetically pleasing, but it also is embedded. There's seeds embedded in exactly, there. Exactly, exactly. So this is more of a concerted effort to sod that area than it is the the the, the netting. We talked about the netting and just the difficulty in, in getting that to take, and also mm -hmm. it's in a trafficked area that if we don't do a good enough job of roping it off, we're gonna have traffic through there. Yeah. And we tried that around a space nugget. You probably recall. We tried that around a space on the other side of the pond when we had a little construction going on before, and it was a disastrous mess. Really, I wouldn't think that people would want to walk in that netting stuff, but maybe not. Well, they they feel like they can walk over top of it, which they do, and then their feet catch on it and drag it and yeah, tear nice. it and etc. So it's not it's not super successful. It, on a place like BK Parkway, where nobody's you know there's not constant yeah. foot traffic mm -hmm. and dogs and and whatever people aren't walking there. Dogs and, that, and whatever along and there. it gets caught up in the mower blades once it starts coming apart they run the mowers over it it gets caught up in when the it blades. gets high enough to have to mow it yeah because it had because it hadn't rotted away enough yet huh yeah. uh, well okay what well, yeah i didn't know that that's, well that's great any know. other uh any other questions about that i guess last one are we i assume this was sod or grass at one point and it's died 
are we worried the like are we confident the sod's gonna so i'm take? not certain if it was ever uh was it established grass or was it just wild grass when they built it just wild grass oh okay there is some uh or you had Right, but we're confident the Bermuda will take, and if water appropriately, it'll survive the heat, the summer, the cold, and the winter, and all that. Yeah. So, we're actually putting two different types of grass on that hillside. We're doing a combination of Bermuda because the vast majority of the space is in full sun, but there is some area closer down to the pond underneath the bald cypress that is actually in the middle picture um, that does get shade throughout the day. So that's why we have a little bit of Palisade Zoysia in there on top or with the Bermuda. Most people will never tell the difference even side by side. Um, it just kind of, they're both thin bladed grasses. So that's why we put that little combo there. Got it, okay. Terry had mentioned the erosion there. There may need to be some, um, some more soil added there. You, you did say that, right, Terry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything better than um, like a blade grass like that to maybe try to prevent future erosion? Is there anything like deeper roots or anything that would be more native? That's not invasive. Whatever. I know the invasive kind. My backyard's full of it. <laughs> no, to answer your point, all your deep rooted grasses are more native grass. Is technically on the invasive species list. Okay. Like, for example, any bee caves, 35, Mohawk, they see blue stem all day long because it is a very deep rooted grass. So it mitigates the erosion onto any of the major roads. Well, the state of Texas turns around and says, well, you can't use that. It's on the invasive species list. Hmm. Um, but they can use it all day long. So, of all the improved turfs, these, you know, they've got a good solid two, three, four inch root system. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about Bermuda is it's a repropagating grass. And that's why we use the 419 blend. There are different blends of Bermuda on the market. There's a sport one or common, but just over time we have found that the 419 just holds up the best um, because of its repropagating. So it goes down and then it, it shoots up a new one, goes down and shoots up. So it kind of maps and kind of creates like a woven root structure underground. Okay. So. Can I ask a question? Sure. I'm just curious why we keep, I know there's some other there's some other places around that too, but it seems odd that we're putting grass down in lieu of the summer that we just had. And that water requirement seems like we should be doing something more seriously. I thought that's the way we could develop. But, you know, the step on the socket is now grass, and in the medium, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just curious why the switch and, and um, something that's much more, it doesn't really belong in Austin, um, particularly in this last summer. Is that a long-term strategy, or you just kind of think the grab is? We understand last time it's going to die again unless we suck more water on the trap. Well, none of the none of the saw that we lay down should should die in, in, given that summer. But I think part of it too is that you know we're our neighborhood is, is somewhat in competition with the other neighborhoods around here, and so to the extent that we go to a to a design that's really much less appealing than many of the other ones around here, it's going to start upsetting the neighbors. Yeah, um, so Josiah may have something to say, and then I'll, yeah, I'll add so to it. I, I hear what you're saying, and, and we definitely look at that option. In this current circumstance, any kind of xeriscape material 
the, my main concern is the pond in itself, preserving the pond. Mm. And to be able to, to make that, like let's just say, for example, that hillside plantable, then you start reconstructing the entirety of that hillside, putting terraces and levels and walls, Flatten anything up, yeah. keeping that current grade, whether it's even inch and a half river gravel, three to five inch river gravel, people are just going to continually move it down. One thing that we were noticing when we reviewed this on site was there was like some real chunky, like close to six inch or greater riprap that was put to help mitigate some erosion that was occurring on the, I guess it'd be the more eastern, northern side. You can see where the kids have just picked it up and plunked it in the pond and it's sitting on the pond at edge. And so the thought process on this is keeping the grass there to help mitigate the erosion that is occurring. The, the very lack of improved Bermuda throughout that whole slope is an indicator that there really hasn't been good grass there in a while. And with us doing a regular turf management program and managing that side of things with the water, I'm confident that, you know, this is the right solution for that area. Now, there are other areas that we've discussed and thought processes I have throughout the district that we'll be turning different things over, converting and eliminating different grass, but, you know, disregard it, paying for the mowing there, let's keep that erosion out of that pond far greater expense in the long term to mediate that pond. So I can see it's a lot cheaper in the short term. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing I'll add to it is that we're in conversations with the WTCPUA about irrigating, flipping our irrigation over to treated effluent. So if that's the case, then we'll be then we might be on the opposite end of the spectrum and getting uh, too much treated effluent. And zero scaping, <laughs> zero scaping doesn't help that conversation. <laughs> and, 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 you know, we, don't, we can't help them solve a problem that we're help, trying to help them solve. Um, and at the same time, we can't take advantage of the treated effluent. So that's one additional consideration. Um, is there anything else about this particular proposal? Okay, so I, I do have a motion on the floor. Do you need me to repeat it? No, got Good. it. Um, I will say, add one more thing. The do, the do not exceed uh, that I've added to this proposal is uh, specifically to try to dis to provide options for us to mitigate any traffic that, that happens. Okay, a motion on the floor. I will second. I have a second. Any further discussion? I'm sorry, Terry. What was? Did you did you specify the do not exceed? Yeah. Okay. And what was? Uh, it is seventeen thousand five hundred. Okay, so another four hundred forty-five minutes. Mm -hmm. We won't do that under landscape new. No further comments from me. Mm -mm. Anything further? All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, Jody, David, where that where that where do you where should that come from? Landscape new or subdivision improvements? Landscape new, I think, right? Yeah, because it's what it is. Yeah, not like a subdivision improvement. Right? Yeah. Okay, go with landscape back. That makes sense. Landscape new. That's probably going to be the answer for if, if, if any of the rest of these pa yeah. uh, pass. Uh, the second one is the southwest side of the same pond, um, and it's and it's much much the same, um, other than there's one decorative rock that needs to be put in, or kind of a, uh, a big huge boulder that's missing. So we're that's you'll see that on the proposal. Um, the same thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest that we go with the do not exceed rather than the, the quoted amount here, the proposed amount. Uh, we do need some additional funding to, again, try to mitigate any traffic that we that we can. Um, so you can see the you can see the uh, this is the part that's the most visible from, say, for example, the corner of Napa and Car Carlsbad. Any cars that are turning uh, onto Carlsbad going either direction can see this in full bloom. And it's just for reference, it's behind the HOA's. Um, it's behind the HOA's doggy station and behind the, the, uh, the post office uh, boxes right there, all the way down to uh, the, the uh, sidewalk that you can see that surrounds the, the Carlsbad Pond. So again, this is primarily sod. It's primarily replacing, um, replacing native grasses that were there that have not succeed, not, um, not lived. 
um, and, the, and, and all the preparation work that goes into that. Again, there's a little bit of irrigation that needs to happen, changing and um, adjusting and modifying the irrigation to make sure that it, the new sod uh, gets fed. Did you mention something about a boulder? We yeah, replace a, a boulder? Yeah, this is the one with boulder, right? I don't see it. There might be a separate one. Oh, the boulder's in a, in a, in a land, the, okay, sorry, flower bed. We'll talk about a boulder in just a few minutes. That I was mistaken, it's not in this particular one. It's a different spread, different place. I don't have any questions on this one because it's the same. It's very similar. We just have very similar. Yeah, yeah. It's the same project, really. But yeah, um, the the we're, we think that the the mitigation of the traffic is is probably going to be less on this one, um, but uh, you know, likely still give them the same the same leeway to to choose a good option. So I, uh, if there's no further discussion, I motion that we approve uh, the recorder or the proposal, Carlsbad sod, southwest side, um, in the amount do not exceed um, 17,300. Uh, hold a second. I have a second, any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 I mean, we just had a tough summer. That's that's yeah. That's, that's, that's uh, too, and so. that area is really bad. And I, I encourage anyone who's who is um, skeptical of this one is to, to drive down there and see. It's pretty bad. And if you go there and look by the road, you'll see that the Bermuda is doing better. Rest the stuff. old stuff that was yeah, there. It's, yeah. It's still right. You can even see that in some of the pictures here. Be honest um okay so the next one is a uh, tree lift so it's, it's that time of year when we need to do a tree lift around carlsbad pond so there we have a proposal here to do a tree lift in addition to the to the normal tree lift uh they're also going to clean out the uh, spillway so the spillway has some trees growing out of it and, and um, not necessarily impeding it but they're very unsightly um and i don't i don't think they're probably not on the um they're not hurting us but they yeah, they're not on the list but they definitely need to be removed so that's what you see there. Uh, and then in addition to that, looks like there's a dead crepe myrtle, which I didn't see myself, but it's out there. Can I ask something? Mm -hmm. uh, when we're doing this, can y'all look at the bottom of the spillway where the water runs and just that area where the rocks is behind the gabion and all that down to the gabion probably needs to be looked at and cleaned up at some point too. Mm -hmm. So are you talking about like the other side, like yes. the drop off of yeah, this building? Yeah, drops off and there's we've got the, the water there? basin. Yeah. Where that cut is in the rock where <clears> this <throat> spillway drops off into. Mm -hmm. Where, where y'all are looking at cleaning is on the top of the hill. Yeah. Down where the rocks are that go around that. There are vines and all that starts growing over. Mm -hmm. And then that and that basin down in the bottom. We need to periodically clean it out too. So. Okay. I look at that for next month maybe uh or, yeah so and we can get into talk to discussion about whether it's is that uh, more pond maintenance stuff than it is the to, for lra landscaping because yeah. there's those ponds need some maintenance we noticed that during the walkthrough it was there's basketballs floating in the pond and there's you know trash yeah the kids mm -hmm. like throwing the rocks off in the basin that we collect water in and it's full of trash yeah okay um okay so um any questions about the pond, Carlsbad Pond tree lift? Uh, why do we have to remove the um, the chipped up debris? Why couldn't we just spread it out there, kind of like the guys who who did some of this other preserve work? Or just it, it seems to me like that that's extra work for no reason. I don't know. Just spread it out. And just let it let it go into the and just let it rot. And it's going to go away pretty quick, I would think, right? Unless you're chopping up metal. Well, you're talking about mulching over yeah. grass, throwing mulch on the top of the grass mm -hmm. around the pond? Uh, around the, someplace around there. I mean, that's what they did. Well, we also, we we also worried about runoff into the pond, right? If yeah. It's, if, it, if it's chipped up to the extent that a, a big rain comes and it washes it all down into the pond, then we have a. No, you don't want to do that. Completely but, different. In, but if it's below, I mean, I'm if just what's, kidding. If what's below? 
if the uh, the debris is thrown out into the area lower. I'm just trying to figure out why you have to haul it away. It seems oh. to be like it's extra work for no good reason. It's well, anytime they do that, they bring a chipper, right? And do you you right. do you dispose of that chipper? Or do you, that chipper? Do you use it somewhere? Chips? Yeah. Uh, we recycle it. You don't have to go take it to a dump or anything like that and pay a, a dump fee and so forth? No, we, we are actually a part of the city of Austin recycling program. So the place that we dispose of it, they there's Okay, that yeah. makes All right. dirt. They do whatever they do with it. They make dillo dirt, do they? All right, well, never mind then. I, I did not know that. I thought we were just paying a, a disposal fee, you know, the dump to do it. And I was just like, well. We, we, we've got a long singing recycling program that we're that's what we use, Another okay. positive story. <laughs> For your newsletter? <laughs> For the newsletter that I'm not going to write. <laughs> okay. But I'm, I've got a list. <laughs> um, Did you make a motion to, to do this? Not, not yet. yet. I was just waiting. Is there any further discussion? Okay, uh, in the for the proposal titled Cosmetic Tree Lift, um, I motion that we approve for the value of $4,500. I'll second that one. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, one more. Uh, Carlsbad Upper Pond uh, plant bed installation. So this is a reinstall. This is a redo of the landscaping that's around that new bridge that was built just a few years ago, and the spill with the top spillway, the upper spillway. So on either side of the of that spillway, there's two area. On either side, there's an area that um, uh, is surrounded, and you can see some of the rock that's kind of creating a um, a terrace. And that needs to be all all needs to be re-landscaped. So this proposal is for both sides of the of the that uh, bridge to re-landscape both of those sides. And so you can take a look at what he's included down there. Uh, again, it's fitting with the aesthetics that we've started to to redo some of the entrances with uh, that we're hoping to use throughout the rest of the neighborhood. Um, everything obviously would be mulched on that terrace. There is uh, one place, the boulder that I mentioned earlier, there's one place that uh, a gap does need to be filled in. I don't see it on there. Do we really not have a rock around here we could use? I'm not being flippant or facetious, but. Well, we got two uh, square miles we, of rock we didn't, here. We didn't look at recycling <laughs> any rocks. Uh, we can steal some from the Napa, Napa Park. <laughs> No, no, but the fact of the matter is, is you're going to pay just as much to get somebody yeah. to move that thing as you are just to have them deliver it and put it in place. You got it. Right. So you got to get a bobcat out there to, to pick those up. And then, of course, you're not driving a bobcat all the way to the other side of the neighborhood with the right. rock bouncing around. So um, yeah, I don't know. Is there uh, any cost savings to be had in, in looking into anything like that? Moving a big, huge boulder from somewhere else? If somebody finds one, we can definitely take a look at it and have that conversation. Absolutely. Well, there's some down here on this trail. We probably just move one of those and nobody there's some know. Napa Park. Do you want to get to the other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's the cost of that anyway? It's seven fifty. Seven fifty dollars. And so that's purchasing the rock and, and transporting the rock and installing the rock. There's a little prep work involved with prep work because I got to get it level with the existing. I don't know why there's a gap, but we're going to have to cut in and remove some soil and everything to get yeah. it set right. Now, is there a special shape? Like we're going to get like a, a rectangle looking one Absolutely. or is it, <laughs> or is it just going to be a big old rock? It, it is a very yeah, you can't, unfortunately, this, the, our pictures here don't show you the gap that we're talking about because it's actually on the other side of that first picture yeah. with the trash can. Mm -hmm. But yes, they're all somewhat re rectangular, cubic rectangular. They're all they're all very similar, and which is I say, he's going to have to like measure that and actually go, go and pick one out, pick, pick a rock that's yeah. specifically that size. <laughs> and, um, and obviously, you'd have to do that before 
this is one thing we didn't talk about. You'd want to do that before you redid the sod that we just approved because you're going to have to have right. a bobcat drive in there and drop that rock in place. Correct. Or whatever, whatever to machinery. Or like 12 angry individuals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're going to run over our new fence. So. Real quick, y'all aren't going to take any of the fencing that's behind those beds out, are you? No. No. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because you Oh, uh, he's talking about that. Uh, what'd you call it earlier? It's hog fence. It's hog wire. Hog wire. Yeah. Yeah. No, we we were, we're that's all staying. Okay. As well as the there's there's uh, already plant like there that's being maintained, right? The, the, the black metal edging will come out, or the, it's actually the metal edging will come out. These and that well, will be reshaped be compared to the home. Because we budget. put that there yes. keep kids from walking around. Yeah. We got falling off the wall. Really? Yeah. We're well, no, we're not going to remove it. Yeah. yeah, and we yeah, actually even talked about pretty. using that to barricade off some and of the it, other areas. Yeah, yeah. something similar that to that. We have to figure out if we're going to yeah. dive into um, the fund. I mean, we could probably just yeah, make this case making that yeah. look better. But. Make it a trellis and have some climbing vines there or something. I don't know. Um, okay, so uh, any any thoughts, comments, concerns about this one? Again, beautification of the of the pond. Overdue. Can I make a clarification for the rest of the report? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of so there, if you go look at the project mm -hmm. upon completion, there is a line I stake towards the bottom. Uh, we will leave pockets um, that will be unplanted because in the spring we want to utilize Mexican bush sage and Prado Barbados, but the ground temperatures are just getting a little too cooler for those plant materials. So on either side and the, 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 the plant beds that are created, we will have voids that will, there is a plan to fill come springtime when the temperature is right. Is that in this proposal? Yes. The price point is not, but the concept is, yeah. 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 So those Prado Barbados, do you plant the plants or do you plant seeds? I plant plants. About how much of those? Ish? I mean, this year's pricing, they're $80 a plant. Where they go next year, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. And once they're planted, they're fine taking the next winter. You just don't want to plant them in the winter. Basically. Correct. Okay. Particularly Pride of Barbados, the timing on them for them to fully start growing is like, you can plant them sooner than April or May, but the ideal time for them to really take off, take off is April or May. Established ones, we cut back once they finally go fully dormant and they don't really start regrowing until the soil temperatures are 65, 70, and that generally, give or take, is about May. Okay, thanks. I don't okay. have anything else. Gentlemen, anything else? Okay, so um, I motion that we approve the Carlsbad upper plant, uh, upper plant bed installation for the total of $15,545. I will second. I have a second, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, the last proposal there, which I won't spend too much time talking about, but that is to replace some of the trees that were removed along the, the, the lower part of Rosaka. Um, that is an area that the uh, mud uh, maintains but does not own. Um, so we're not prepared to move forward with that proposal at this point. I need to have further discussion with those homeowners in that area to, to ensure that we're on the up and up to make sure. Uh, so we're gonna, we'll probably look at uh, that proposal next month if there isn't any changes to that that take place between now and then. Wait, so what's the difference there as far as ownership? See that wall mm -hmm. that, in, in, that it actually appears in all three of the pictures? Yep. Um, the, that's not the property line. Property line is closer to where the picture is taken from. So the mud maintains all of that land, although those homeowners own it. And their wall is, you know, this is their land. The wall is here, cutting off this whole portion of their land that we maintain, right? So before we go plant trees, I want to have discussions with those homeowners to make sure that everything is copacetic. And so which homeowners own that? Just the the ones that back up to that just on the wall or not that whole sort of like is that what is that sea view 
down there? Like, is yeah, that sea eagle, eight yeah, sea eagle. On sea eagle so is that wall not maintained? I'm not trying to change what subjects that? here, no. but say again? No. We own it, yeah. It's we own a, the it's wall. It's a maintenance-free wall, but yeah, we own it. Some of the builders and one guy who was on the mud board, John Hagee in particular, as I recall, um, they wanted to have the developer move to build a fence or a wall and move it up the hill so that they would have more privacy to people who live there. So it was basically to sell the houses because if they put the the fence or the wall closer down, then you'd be able to look into their backyard. So am I telling the truth on that? For yeah. change. <laughs> I mean, I, I know change. when it, the neighborhood was built that the wall was built, and yeah, yeah. we so kind of assumed ownership. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, my, I was just curious why that wall was solid rock and the other walls weren't. And again, I don't want to get off topic. That's it was, it was a, price point. But it's a big one. It's a big wall. They also. And then the HOA restrictions specifies that the mud owns that tenant. Specifies that the mud owns and maintains, or just maintains? No, just just. We don't own it. Yeah, as far as I know, that's what I Well, not according to Travis. Travis Cad. Yeah, I mean that, that's what we we went through this six months ago when we were talking about removing those trees. Like, wait, we don't own the trees. It's someone else's yard. Hmm. So. Uh, and you can see, I mean, take a look at the, take a look at Google Maps or look it up on Travis CAD and you can see that the property line, their property lines go almost all the way out to Rusaka. So, you know, if there's some sort of a mm -hmm. easement on the, along Rusaka, you know, maybe the sidewalk, two feet from the sidewalk, but other than that, it's all homeowners. And Jody, to answer your question, you can take a look at the, the map and you can see 1805, 1809, Right, so we have to go to each of those houses sort of behind them? Like, is that sort of the... The way we're doing it, or I'm just curious. I don't know how I'm going to tackle that yet, to be honest. Right. I might send you down there. But I mean, I, I don't, I don't anticipate any pushback. Right? There were trees there that we removed, and the trees were providing some sort of shade cover for their backyards that are now gone. Right? And I we even removed them back. because one of those homeowners complained about them being dead, and they could see dead trees from their back from their back porch or whatever. So I don't anticipate anything, but I just don't want to swing a heavy hammer and then have backlash. We, we have previously maintained it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do they so, have a right? But we haven't planted or done anything like that there. Do they have a right to determine what kind of trees they want there? So if they came back and said, no, we well, want as long as it's Probably as long as it fits within the, the HOA's deed restrictions. Like there's those three types of trees we can plant, right? But the there's, in, in the proposal, and... he's, he's suggested we're talking about a proposal that let's let's table this for next month. Okay. Okay. Um, unless somebody's really feel strongly about continuing the conversation, because I just don't want to waste a lot of time on something we're not going to. Well, is, is timing of the essence on planting trees right now, or can it wait? Does it make it? Okay. Yeah. So if there's no objection, I'll just move on. I'll move on. I'm not spend any more time on that one. So, okay. Now I lost my. I do kind of have a general comment on, and Jody and I are having a bit of a sidebar here, is that over the past few months, we've had some pretty expensive um, projects. And I'm just, we're actually going to go back and try to figure out how much we've, we've already spent um, yep. compared how to the four years. Uh, like, yes, we definitely need to have a budget conversation yeah, about how much we want a budget. To and if there's, and we'd also like to know if there's other projects like this that need to be addressed before end of the fiscal um, so that we can try to work that in because the last thing we want is all of a sudden realize that we have really just blown our budget because we weren't paying attention to it um, right i think we've spent more on landscaping this this fiscal year and the end of last fiscal year than we have probably in the history of the neighborhood mm -hmm. and i don't think that goes unnoticed but i also you know um Director Mincy and I have had a conversation a couple of times. We need to sit down with you guys and really discuss the budget yeah. and understand how much we have to spend um, on some of these areas. Because the truth of the matter is, is we could resod the entire neighborhood, but we don't have the budget for it, right? We, we do need to start looking at proposals more in the long term. And, it, and it's kind of like a drawing up a five-year plan or a one-year plan or whatever for landscaping alone. Mm -hmm. What areas need to be redone? What areas need to be prioritized? What kind of funding should exactly. we 
should we dedicate towards, say, for example, the Carlsbad Pond? Because we're like, now we're spending, you know, $50,000 around the Carlsbad Pond. So how do we do that without having a board meeting to do that? How do we do that? Do we need to do that in session? Um, you would have one of this committee and one of your committee talk. Mm. And then you would not be able to then talk to the other because then that's a walking quorum. It's, it's, so, it's, it's so difficult. It yeah. is. But on the other hand, it's not really board well, level discussion. Yeah, but I mean, you it's can't, I can't discussion. have three of you discussing or four of you discussing. Well, either that or we do meeting. a special session and we get everybody and around could, the table who needs to, who needs to be present. And that's typically when it's something where you would have two and two or three, yeah. you tend, they tend to, boards tend to have a, a workshop sure. and, and you just have one or two items for whatever your workshop right. is. And mm -hmm. you just Maybe hash that's through the landscaping too. budget. Does it have to be? video live feed everything like, it's a it's an uh it's an open meeting just like this with, cool. with all the notice and the whole bit session. yeah it's just a work session workshop um but it's it, it is still technically an open meeting i think right. we ought to plan for that in january so in it being an right. open meeting like we go above and beyond for our open meeting like we wouldn't need to have it televised and we need to have it recorded well we wouldn't even need to have it recorded as long as you were here to do minutes right right or someone from your office was here to do minutes. right 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 so we're we not do, required we, uh, to tell just recognize to we this. yeah we go above and beyond for our normal sessions that would probably be so we could do a the, lesser to the bare minimum for mm -hmm. the, to meet the but yeah. still subject to the notice and right yeah, yeah. got to post yeah. an agenda the whole all that yeah got it okay and I, I you know I, I think the, the HOA board does that the the, the PUA board regularly does that mm -hmm. uh, you know we put on an agenda with two bullet items on it sit so if we want to coordinate a time we do that through Kelly then to get what we can do like, that at the end when we get down to the the item on the agenda that's about the next meeting you guys can okay. can uh, hash out when you might want to do a workshop uh, and then decide that and then set your next regular meeting now do you need to be there for that too i don't have to be but someone needs to take minutes so y'all can do it and take it minutes. may just not be as near as detailed but right that's okay well if we record the entire thing mm -hmm. still need to take minutes though we right. should have someone do it because otherwise it's yeah. well you it's need not to take, gonna get you need, done you need to, they can they can do what they do now which is to take the minutes it's aside from the, the individual thing she's writing down like the minutes are being done in between sessions by off the recording in the transcript like that's a, that's one of the reasons why they've gotten so much better is because we're providing them better input you know how much time that would take listening to the recordings yeah listen yeah to recording. we pay for it every month I know, but no. <laughs> I know what you in addition to listening to the recordings, like hyping or keeping track of minutes. Yeah, but I think this, well, and now we're off topic, but I, I think the board has had a history of going into in depth, into yeah. very great detail in the minutes, and it's just not required. Mm -mm. And it's, it's, not. Not, it's, it's not normal to do that. Mm -mm. It's not normal to try to script down everything that we say. I think that we're, we're, we're kind of at a, a, a common ground right now where the decisions that we're making certainly are in the minutes. Some of the discussion, if it's pertinent to the decisions, are in the minutes. But every single word that comes out of my mouth doesn't make it into the minutes. Right. You wouldn't want. And usually, usually the attorneys are the ones that say, "Don't be so descriptive and mm -hmm. and verbose in, in the minutes." Yeah, it's and not, we had that discuss. We've had that discussion over the last couple of months. Just let's let's get this to a manageable level, mm -hmm. right? And we're also providing them, you know. If an individual is honestly is very interested in learning what we discuss, it's a recorded. They can go out to YouTube and watch it anytime they want. Mm -hmm. So, can so can we, by the way, and I've done that for for former meetings. Okay, I guess we can approach that a little further once we get down to the future meetings agenda item. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yes. the, the the special session. Yes. Yeah, because I don't know that any of us are prepared to do it right now. But okay. So that was another 10 minutes on an item that we're not, <laughs> we're not doing. It. Um, okay, is there anything further for new proposals? I think I've, I've worked our way through all of them. Four, there's five total, four were approved tonight. Correct. Okay. Um, if there's nothing further, we'll go to D3, four D3, which is stormwater basin maintenance. I have nothing to report on that. Good news. Uh, we'll move on to, is there anything further for the facility staff committee before I move on? Questions, comments? 
Nope. Okay. We'll move on to line item number five. Gentlemen, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Josiah. Happy holidays. Josiah. Oh, yeah. Y'all get some. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the uh, so under under item number five, let's skip down to five B, which is Heart Lake Point Homeowners Association. And we'll have um, we'll hear from Lake Point President. Hello, I'm sorry, I didn't make the last couple of meetings. Oh yeah, we need to just grab the thing down there. So let's see, we have I don't think I made the last meeting. We had an election, we have new board members, and um, we have several projects that we're going to get going now, including you may have seen the, um, the, the three damage of possible contacts um, thing, which is whatever we get done with the event. And so if you have any things you want to share from the mind, if you want to you know, let us know, I'm trying to get those out about every Going on. How often are you doing it? About every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that you want to know, like a mud corner, that you like that thing called the two dice that you got this, like the school. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, I think David's very interested in providing some details. <laughs> I mean, we, we've, um, we've spent a lot of, of our resources, we've spent a lot of time, and there are a lot of improvements around here. Yeah. And well, so yeah. it's, it's, I want to showcase that. Yeah. So, but I am not a writer. <laughs> so, anyway, I just want to offer that to you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Another thing that we're doing is um, we have approved and I've signed a contract for putting in new place gate and swings and benches and park and all sorts of stuff in that park. We had a, a parks committee um, comprised of several um, users who have small children get involved and they took, we talked to three different companies and came up with a, a bid that we thought was um, you know, because I think it's about 154,000 was out of calls to replace the stuff. They are going to um, take everything out here and put in new kitty mulch that's compliant and they're going to take out. We I mean, can't get the parts for them on this area anymore because that's what we really tried to do if we could, but we can't. And um, so they're going to put concrete where we have now the stuff around the base of the place gate and then where we've got those um, timbers around the, the swings they're going to put a little concrete thing and i was a little concerned about that because it seems like if a kid fell and they're going to come from any more so, uh, timber but apparently that's what the code is now we're not, since this is older we're not code so that should start they they're ordering the stuff now and it's, i think it's got about a seven or eight week Lead time, it all goes well. So when they come in and they'll take the stuff out, we're going to have them um, look to see where they're going to pay it out of the utilities like that to make sure that nothing's is you know, dug up that shouldn't. And um, including sprinklers and all that kind of stuff, they're going to try to, um, to avoid all of that. And uh, we've been talking to Colorado, they're going to put some stuff down to try to mitigate the grass being torn up and stuff like that. And Probably have some of that we have to do. So hopefully, um, by you know this spring we'll have that that going, and that should last us for a while. Um, another big project that we have that I think we all have in tactics is that we're finally moving ahead or want to move ahead with um, the Rosaka fence replacement. We have heard a lot of things from neighbors. Um, you know, ideally, sure, we would like to have a. a stone wall rather than a regular fence but the cost is prohibited and that fence just looks terrible I mean, you know, I mean it's really bad um <clears throat> the HOA owns that fence so we've been spending a 
lot of time, particularly um, working with different vendors. We've got K2, we've got this conference, and we had um, uh, Austin and Outdoor. And they put up different samples of events there. And the main thing, and they have told me this before, but just to reiterate, it's been a while. Um, the main thing that we plan to do is replace the all of originally that fence was put up and they put wooden posts inside that wall and that two foot wall that's got fill in the middle of it has um, you know it's deteriorated on top too so if you walk down along the top you can see how you know, nasty that stuff looks. So we had um, both of the two proposals that were looking at in particular is between and it was within about you know five thousand dollars of each other and um, they're, they plan to attach that wall. They'll put in um, metal posts to the fence and they will have a, a metal a bolt, a flange on the bottom so that into the footer so that it will be you know, permanent and it can suddenly deteriorate. And they'll cap the top on it. And then they'll put the, the six foot fence on top and around where the, um, the posts come out of the wall, they're going to put some kind of more of a rubberized um, sealant so that when the wind blows, it doesn't, the posts don't tear up the, the wall like they've done before and have room, the room to get. Yeah. So we've talked to them about that. Um, another thing that we've talked about, which is more important to us because we're all volunteers, is to um, have a, a project manager on that. So I know when everybody was looking, because I was on the committee before, we were trying to do the, the regular wall. <clears throat> that was a, a thing that we might have required as well. Both K2 and Discount will have a, a manager who's here you know, every day, and they've named a couple of the, um, the different people, and they, you know, they both are good organizations. And we've, I think, the MUD has done work with both Discount and K2, SSEHOA. Discount built our fence that we had before, and I know that we always had other stuff that they discounted, and then K2 did stuff over here where we all got our president's voice on the plan on the Carlson or NAPA. <clears throat> so, anyway, what we're, what we're looking for is there are a couple of final things that we need to, um, a couple of things we need to finalize. Oh, the other thing we're going to do too is we're going to take the, those metal caps off the top of the pillars that have been there from the beginning of time, we're just put in with the tied to a brick and when we get a heavy windstorm they'll blow out and you know blow down on the soccer which isn't good. So we're gonna get rid of those and we'll put um, concrete that will be affixed to the top of the of the pill of the pillars. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be and we won't have squirrel nests in there anymore and all that kind of stuff that we've had in the years. So that would be in keeping to make things look the same right now except for the footer or the Wall at the bottom um, that's on the side. It will make it look like the rest of the neighborhood. The, there is some conversation about perhaps changing the color. The problem would be where we transition at the corner of Napa and Sonoma. But um, we're working to put some samples up so we can get some feedback from the neighborhood on that, what they'd love to do. Um, we plan to use a, like a marine grade stain, which is what we did on Sonoma and it's lasted already for 12 years. Um, pretty much it, it's, it really helps a lot. Yeah. It's expensive, but it's you know it's good stuff. So the biz that we have from um, uh, discount fence is turnkey it includes everything. The evening and not do the this afternoon farms and stuff. So they'll buy the paint that we take out, they'll um, you know they'll buy the caps, they'll the carpet caps, all that stuff. Um, and paint both sides of the fence. And with K2, we talked about that the HOA would go ahead and buy the, you know, order the caps. They're $20,000 for 60. We'll actually get about 71. We have 66 columns, but that way there's any breakage. We can have something left over. Um, and then we told them that we also would pay for the paint, which we did, we've done before. So once you add in that amount, it winds up to be about, about $5,000, you know, then $5,000. And the total cost right now that we're looking at is not, there's still a couple of things that we need to negotiate, but it's close. It's looking at about 380 
5,000 bags, probably a little bit less than that, but around 385,000. So what I'd like to do is um, ask y'all to um, vote at your next meeting to approve funding half of it, which is in our agreement that we have with the MUD when we replace step one. So we have a third of the East Coast three party agreement, now we have a two party agreement. And um, the last one, I think, was in 2018, I signed by Stephen Kudak, who was the president of the Little Club MUD. And what we'd like to do is have you all in the agreement that we have, it says that the MUD will manage everything. And we're happy to manage it if you prefer not to do that, because I think we've got a pretty good handle on what we're doing. And, um, but if, but what we would like to do, because we have some big expenses coming up as well, um, is have you all do, the neighbors been waiting for five years for this to happen. And we were prepared as an HOA, as the HOA to contribute up to five hundred thousand dollars at the time for the other wall, but we have other things that come up. And we're also every year we put aside like out of our use, we put aside about um, ninety-eight thousand dollars towards the fence wall fund because we'll have to replace some other ones if things come up. <clears throat> so we've been saving for that and we don't want to do everything that we've got. And we do have this agreement. So we're looking for y'all to um, to to vote next at the next meeting, I think it's on the eleventh, to uh, put up half. I think according to the agreement we're supposed to do maybe fifty one percent on this one. We do or fifty one point eight or something ridiculous in age way that's 49.1. As when we did the BK wall, they tried to pay for most of it. And then when we did the Sonoma, we paid for all of it because the months didn't have any money. So um, we feel like it's it's a in the spirit of the agreement we all do. Do you have any Do we have a copy in the agreement? I would have to go looking for it. I provided it in to know you. I, I Just the bits. Uh, yeah, we didn't. It's not in our packet for this week. To I review this week. As long as we can, you circulate it to the directors. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, can, I can send it to you. I, I mean, I know Brian, Brian, and he was still doing stuff. Mm -hmm. I've got a, I've got a signed copy of it. Yeah. No. All of, I got were the three bids okay. and the scope of work. I'll send it back. So big picture, 385, do Rusaka. You know what the timeline would be? Ballpark, like ballpark? ASAP, these guys are ready to go. And, and then it would be, what, two, three months? Oh, no, I think they have to order materials, but they're, um, they'd like to get started before this cost. I think we would be able to start at the latest in March, I'll have to verify that, but as soon as they can order this stuff, as soon as they can. And how long did they? Expect once they got the materials in to have it installed? Um, well, when we did the Sonoma, which was longer, it took um, a month, maybe. So, no, and that was, was a lot longer than for soccer. And what they plan to do is they'll start at either end and work towards the middle. And so they'll put up the posts. They want to do about you know, two or three houses at a time. So, and they'll be putting up. You know, we'll work with the neighbors to make sure that they have dogs and have good temperature testing and all that stuff. We've done this four times before. So, um, but we'd like to get it done so that it looks good for, you know, spring real estate selling to summer selling if I possible. So then, Rosaka would, Rosaka would be done this way and then Sonoma would follow, or is Sonoma good and it won't? It'll Sonoma's stay with... good right now, but okay. probably be next. The problem is, as we did the one, like the BK wall was fine. We did some maintenance, you know, low maintenance. The, the, the setting, which goes out behind where the mud lines are there, that was done in, I think, 2018, because I worked with this contest on that one. And so that one should be good for, and we put the good paint on that. So the next one would be Sonoma, but it's about 12 years old, so we did it in 2005, 
this whole food they did a little bit of maintenance to it um, a year and a half ago, and there okay. some boards and you know, power washes and stuff. But the problem with the Sonoma one is it's not using the ground. Like, we try to get it off the ground, yeah. so it doesn't rot. But, um, but this one's great, but this is off the ground. So, so I, I would, if I could, you know, catch a guess, I would think we'll probably need to put out another five, six, seven years or something. Okay. The Sonoma, especially if we do a little bit of maintenance on it. And then not that it's like a preference thing. Is this is it going to match? Like the color on Rosaka going to match Sonoma? Because it's all wood. Like these samples are yeah, just the wood. Yeah. But it would be painted to match. Is it, it would, look the same? Well, whatever people decide that they want, it won't look like that because that's just okay. Yeah, basically the sample. So if you can look at how they look. Gotcha. Okay. Some some folks have said they like it to stay natural, like a more natural color. I thought that's what we were doing, but then I didn't. Yeah. know what was up with snow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so then you're not looking at staining all the way down Sonoma the same color. And try to match the color of the stain. So the stain's expensive, but the paint that you use on Sonoma would be cheaper. Well, no, this is all the same thing. I call it paint the stain. Oh, it's a solid stain. So, um, I think the cost to be for them is probably like about twenty thousand. To 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 do what? To paint it. Just but, to stain the entire Rosaka paint. Well, yes, I think the paint is probably we have to get rid of that. But they, I don't know what the name of the paint she was in charge of that before. You know, mm. we did it the last time. They recently repainted it. Mm. Uh, so. Okay. So when we say stain, not like a wood stain, it's a paint stain, or whatever we want to call it. And uh, potentially you'd match both if you went a different color over here. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Or, or we have this one, this one matches. Match to that one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is, do you all, have you all talked at all about um, a pickleball court? Or, sorry. David, can you stay on this one topic for now? Yeah. I think, I think Jason. On the fence? On the yeah, no, and then you can then you can ask for. Are are you guys bonding? I thought we were. Are y'all getting bonds? Because I didn't see that in the bids. Um, we are outside of my house. Okay. Didn't work out well for us last time, though. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just quickly, another before before talking about the ball. The other thing we're in the process of. As to the pool pad, do um, you think we'll ever get lifeguards back in there? <laughs> well, do you think we'll ever have lifeguards back in the pool? 
lifeguards. Pre pre lifeguards. I'm sorry. We previously had. I'm sorry. I'm, it, it's it's seven o'clock. No, we previously there were lifeguards at the pool. Do we think that will ever be able to come back? Okay. Right. Right. Okay. And I have one more question. This is more for my edification, but at the beginning you said that there were new um, new officers on the HOA. And then you said, I'm sure you've heard about that. I checked my email. I didn't see any email from the HOA. So who are the new members of the oh, HOA? Yeah. We had our, our annual election in, in September, mm -hmm. and we had three new members. Um, Jeff Hansen, who Yeah, I was, I was just curious if, if anybody ever talked about um, not converting the, the tennis court, but adapting the tennis court to have pickleball on it. Yes, we have. And one of our biggest um, problems with that is that we feel like everything else is that is necessary to Right, and that, that's actually came to mind as well. So, so the Napa Park is a private park, right? So it's not just open to the public. Yeah, right, right. But legally, it's not open to the public. Like, just city of BK folks are not supposed to come over, even on the playscape or swings or whatever. Hmm. And they try to keep that to a minimum by putting up, you know, uh, card swipes on the on the things. But it's to, like she mentioned, to various levels of success there. Um, but has there has it ever been discussed with the Lake Point Mud, or sorry, either of the former MUDs to take over that park, the maintenance and the ownership of the park? And the reason why I ask that is because I've thought about that in the past, but then I think we would have to make it a public park. Mm -hmm. And it would have to change from a private park to a public park. And that all of that stuff would come down. There would be, obviously there would be tax benefits to that, because we would be maintaining the property rather than the HOA. Um, but there may. We're not spending, I mean, on the equipment now, we're not using it. Mm -hmm. We're not spending money on the equipment. Mm -hmm. 
Right. That's all good stuff to know, though. Thanks for updating us. Uh, I, yeah. So we haven't had an opportunity to review the the uh, agreement between the HOA and the and the former MUDs yet, uh, and we, we certainly will do that. But in this, was the spirit of that agreement more towards um, cost sharing on the permanent wall situation? And now we're kind of using that agreement to discuss, to at least baseline discuss cost sharing on a fence? Well, I think over the years, the HOA and the MUDs shared a lot of costs. For example, the writing of the entrances we would share, and the HOA paid for um, the escape cover at that um, physical park where we, we split with the mud. And we've done a lot of things where we, you know, we split things. We used to split three months and we were two months. But I think the, the wish has always been that we could do um, a masonry wall so that it wouldn't you know, be much more maintenance free. But when we got this bids back from what they wanted to do for soccer, that was in the millions of dollars. When we did PK Road, it was about $700,000, as I recall, for a long time ago. But the cost had just gotten was so prohibitive. We didn't have money for that. And I mean, even if we break some of our rates, which we don't want to do, and we already raised a couple like two years ago or last year. Um, and I mean, we just, We'll never be able to save them to get that done. And I know there was some talk about, well, maybe the mud might have a bond, um, you know, try to have an election and have a bond to pay and do all the stuff. But the fact that I think the former mud three and former mud five now are just paying off their debts from the development, you know, after 30 years or so, 25, 30 years, um, I don't think there's a lot of that would have to be an election, and if it fails, then we will have lost another year and a half. It's best call, you know. Maybe we can move forward in the future, but I think at the very least we need to get everything, you know, up to par so everybody's ready. And if you're supposed to get that next rock ball, you know, Sonoma, but there's some disagreements going on, and it, you know, it didn't happen, so that's why they actually had to move. The months didn't have any money that needed to be replaced. So, um, so, yes, I think I really, and we were thinking we would be great if we could do all of this in masonry, but I just think it's, it's not practical. I think that if we had been able to do it 15 years ago, we would have been able to get it done in the water. But there's no place in the agreement that it says specifies that it has to be. Specifies that it has to be what stone. Amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. So we will need to obviously review that individually. Um, Yeah, I think one thing that one one challenge that I see is that I don't necessarily want the mud to get into a 
fence maintenance type of arrangement where we're maintaining a fence that the HOA was, you know, you maintain all the way down Sonoma, right? Lake Point HOA does? Yeah, but we've replaced it once. Right. And, and I've lived here for 26 years. Yeah. 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 It's kind of a builder's builder's afterthought, probably afterthought of the builders. Yeah. So now we've made it all standardized with metal posts. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anything further for that or Lake One Enjoy? No, that was helpful. Uh, the bullets are kind of um, just general, but do we make it through? Yeah, collector's corners. So we'll we'll uh, we still haven't had started the conversation about five B two the collector's corners. Okay. Uh, so we'll have to table that again. Okay. We're obviously, doing a lot of stuff with landscaping. That's yes. Taking up our time. So um, anything further from the HOA? You know, I don't think so. I was yeah. So we'll move on then to um, to five uh, a? five a. Yeah, we'll go. I guess we should say go back to five a. Um, so yeah, I would. I probably are, are as, as just as knowledgeable as you are because we've been on the same email threads and discussing it back and forth. Um, but these guys don't know anything about it. I don't because obviously we haven't had a session since then. Um, so just in brief, the uh, what Pat is referring to is there was some, there's been some odors coming from the wastewater treatment plant. Um, and I live very near there. So in my particular case, it's been pretty strong. Um, it just different days. And I think that they've determined, you know, what in the weather happens that makes it stronger than, but there's been some malfunctions of some equipment. Uh, I don't, don't care to know the specifics, but there's been malfunctions of some, some equipment and they're looking at replacing or repairing equipment in the wastewater treatment plant. And that's the reason why mm -hmm. it's taken them a little while to get to it. Um, that's all I have. Is that yeah, in line was, with what you're? I think Jennifer, the writers, the manager, said if they were trying to locate a lower, lower, right. lower strata, as well as some other stuff. And um, so it has a smell that for two days now. At least I have Right. Started. Yeah, so I haven't really either. Bad. I had neighbors you know, emailing me and then off the other texting me and stuff that was really right. bad this yeah. weekend. And um, so but I just wonder, you know, at one point there was some discussion about maybe trying to decommission this plan and then taking over the balls and the same as the station. And I went to it. There's still discussion about that. There. I went to the CBA meeting six months ago or so and asked about that, and everybody really seemed to know anything about it. So it, um, I don't know if it's on there. Obviously, it wasn't on the TV plan or anything like that, but it would be great if our PUA representative could um, start to make a push for that. Because I don't think, and, and I must say, the, the current management over it. Yeah, just like so heads and tails of what we used to have. You know, I think Jennifer Rikers is just awesome. But it's an old plant and, and it's, it's not going to get any better. It's going to cost a much more money. Mm -hmm. It should be great to get that out of here so we don't have to experience what's going on in the past. Mm -hmm. And all those lines are getting bad, too. You know, the ones that they tore up, there's more, I'm sure, that are just as bad as crumbling. Yeah. It's nice to make push it. No. Yeah, so we don't. We've made contact with our HOA or our um, uh, PUA representative, um, and uh, we're gonna. I have a little bit more to say about that, but it, none of the discussion has bordered what you. Th that's in his report when he gives it to us. That's what he sees as a. Uh, as that's that's what's been delivered to him and historically as a priority for uh, the former muds and like but now is to decommission that plant. And so it's on his report every time he gives us an email or a report about it that essentially says we're still looking at doing this. But as you say, if he's the only one that has that idea on the board, then something's not happening. But in, in 
Yeah, yeah. So I've been on this for what three years, and that's always been my impression is that the plan was to soon decommission that wastewater treatment plant that's actually in the neighborhood. Well, the, and, and I will say that when we've discussed the, that property, when we've discussed so Napa Pond, yeah. there's a plan for us to get the property back. Yeah, like, well, yeah. not the actual wastewater treatment plant property, but the, but the area, area in front yeah. of it. And when we've discussed that area and them conveying that land to the to the mud, they've mentioned, well, we're still going to look at decommissioning this plant. So the operations folks know, or, or you know, or at least have it in mind. Perhaps not the board. Um, the executive board. Hmm. I don't know. When I do those calls, I think the same people who are out here in operations when they were putting in the town, who they said that they can do their calls and calls. Huh. So, anyway, this is just asking. Yeah. Um, so, then, so uh, with regard to the, the um, the PUR, our WTCP PUA representative on, on the board. Um, so I made contact with him. Um, he's, he is interested in continuing to serve. Uh, if we, if we'll have him, um, I, uh, Jason and I, an outreach subcommittee have discussed and come up with an idea, the, the notion that we should kind of rebase that relationship. Um, you know when his term's up or it really is not? Uh, I think it's like April of this, of this year, but the truth is, is it really we doesn't do matter. Anyway. Yeah, we could, he serves at this board's pleasure, so we can we can replace him at any time. I, I will say that you know, on one end of the spectrum is completely replacing him. The other end of the spectrum is probably get, getting him to do getting well. On the other end of the spectrum is doing nothing and continuing the relationship that we're carrying at right now. But the middle ground is us generating some high level bullet points for priorities for this board, and then giving them to him right and making sure that he understands those yeah, and clearly yeah. outlining the objectives that we expect and of mm -hmm. course he'd have to he has to agree with that too it's not a one-way mm -hmm. uh, conversation but it's it's agreement between our board and our board rep our, our pua representative on the expectate on his expectations that's fair right and he he's expressed to us in the past that he has and we we've it's it's written in plain english in the, in the origination documents um, he represents not only Lake Point, but all of unincorporated Travis County outside of the city of, well, all of all the rest of unincorporated Travis County in the, in the PUA's um, service area. And he, right. and, but he works for us, right? He's not a volunteer, mm. right? We pay him? No. no. For those services? Uh, oh. No, it's totally, I think it's a vol totally volunteer. Or it's w oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't, we, don't. Huh. we appoint him to the board. We, we appoint him to the nominate, board, yeah, nominate. nominate him, however that process is, but he is on the board of WTCPUA. But hmm. yeah, like Terry said, he represents Travis County, but we appoint, and then I think it's B Cave and Hayes County each had two each, maybe, yeah. Hmm. So it's, and his job is to run the PUA. We just get to nominate him and place him on the board. So it's well and and a stranger and give him our right. our, our um, input our priorities yeah mm -hmm. but the, the, our, you know and i don't know that it's ever been explicitly outlined um he did have some concern about uh, becoming more involved with op the operations of the wastewater treatment plant of the pua in general mm -hmm. rather than just a board director um, executive position um and so we need to kind of hash that out and, and understand our board needs to understand just how DP wants to get into the operations aspect of it. But right. my understanding of, of his, him personally is that this is his expertise, like this is his life. So, you know, him volunteering to serve the neighborhood that he lives in and the area that he lives in and the PUA that he falls under is, is natural. But if he's just going to be the decision maker, I'm not sure if that's in our best interest. Yeah. If he's just if he's limited to just being a, a, an appro approve or deny person without blending some more of the expertise. Well, I just know we had some frustration back when that um, that bill was proposed by the representative out of out of uh, Lakeway. Right. And, and there wasn't any pushback from him on that. And, and that think, was yeah, our detriment. Was, my recollection is he was surprised when I said, Jason, we're not really in favor of that. So I think part of that was 
there was a lack of community. I think a big issue has just been there's been a lack of communication. I think we have to lay out what we want to hear from Jason mm -hmm. and um, also how we expect him to communicate any issues that we have or any concerns that we have to the board. Does that sound right, Terry? Yeah. Um, then I think there's going to be that inherent conflict of interest there between our priorities and the priorities that he sees fit for the PUA's priorities, right? Yeah, and right. Continued expansion and, and that. But stuff. that's always there. But normally, when you appoint someone, there's a lot of shared you know, alignment right. with right. goals. And I don't think we perhaps have that alignment with our current draft. Yeah. So um, I, I don't think we're prepared to make a decision here. But if we talked about if we talked about one end of the spectrum, which would be to replace him, yep. Um, and the middle middle ground, I think the middle ground is is what Jason and I suggested we try first, and that is rebaselining the conversation with him, um, setting very clear roles and expectations, uh, in agreement with him, getting agreement with him. Um, and if that doesn't work out anyway, then the father end of the spectrum, like I said, is replacing him, and we need to put put together a short list of replacements. Mm -hmm. um, we need to develop and and and, and um, to present a transition plan, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't just want to cut it and move on um we would obviously have to nominate somebody and then it, they would have to be approved right um i'm sorry is that not the case yeah. so the our mud like it's a fairly automatic our mud mm -hmm. nominates somebody or appoint someone i think we have no point. they have no yeah you appoint yeah. but the other two at large we have a we have to approve unless they do another end their own so I, uh, I do have a bit of a request in, in that you know you talked about uh, coming up with some KPIs and and other targets right. and so forth. My request would be that that I guess the committee come up with a uh, with with those things. From my standpoint, I just like to to see those just so I can better understand the issues that are um, that are out there with the the PUA. And, um, and, and yeah, and our design. Just, I didn't because... even suggest that we were going to, as a subcommittee, we were going to come up with them on our own. Oh, you we, would, we would come up with them as a baseline and then present them, and we would all agree on. Okay, them. but it, yeah, but at least that we, discussion would, before would help we, me understand. Yeah, yeah because you know, what it, we, we do want against. the opinion of the board, not the opinion of the subcommittee. Okay, right? the, the overarching opinion. Of the yeah, board. simple things like he attend more than one meeting every three years. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Simple <laughs> expectations like that, <coughs> especially with technology, because I believe that he is out of town a lot. But you know, with technology, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, there is a way to loop him in to the meetings, even if he can't physically be here. So yeah. we, we just need to work on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Anything further about the PUA? Before we move on. Okay. I have one question on the outreach committee. I think it's part of this discussion. If, if you're moving on to number six, um, no, I'm not moving on to number six. I'm moving on to five. Oh, I, think we've um, I thought that five C and five D were the same, but I, I see now that it's a different. I know, but that's fine. Um, so five C gives us an opportunity to talk about any other governmental or non-governmental entities. So there's a there's a preserve that abuts ours. I preserve on our western border. Do we ever have interactions with that preserve, or do we know anything about those those folks? Is that the city of Austin? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not developed, but is there any kind of preservation aspect to it, or besides just letting it? No, it's it it's, it's the Balcones Canyonland project. It's preserved. Period. I mean, there's right. Nothing. Back they'll back. never do anything yeah, with it. Is there any reason that we need to have an interaction with whoever oversees that land, or just? I mean, like, it's that? city of Austin, and they have like a nature Austin. center there. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. They have a nature center there. Yeah. It's Riker Ranch. That's what it's called. Yeah. So you get to it by going like by Chick Fil A and going up there. Um, yeah, you go over there, yes. and I think it's usually locked. But sometimes they'll have like uh, nature programs there and stuff. Huh. I took my kids cool. over there. I didn't realize. Yeah. That. So now you know. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want anybody to trade 
No, you don't. You don't just walk over there and hang out. But... And okay. Honestly, you don't want to get involved with the city of Austin. I was going to say. That's not <laughs> yeah, no, nothing is going to end well there. Yes, I said it. YouTube. <laughs> What's that? He said, "Yes, I said it." YouTube. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, sorry, not sorry. Sorry, I need to go back to five A because I did have a, uh, an update on the um, on the. It's just five A in general. It's not five A one. It's just five A in general, and that is. Um, so they are in various stages of the communications towers. So the communications towers. One thing we haven't heard about in the last couple of sessions. Um, they are working on the last two. They are in the very beginning stages of the last two. The rest of them are in various stages of doneness and completeness. And I have time set aside tomorrow to walk to some of those sites and make sure that they're, you know, that they mm -hmm. that they uh, look like what we expected them to look like, and they're repaired. The area is repaired and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to get a little better understanding of uh, of those comms towers and kind of what they're what they ended up looking like. There was one comms tower that they did have to extend higher, um, and it was not in view of any houses, so it was it was fine to do, and it still doesn't go above the tree line. So unless you know what you're looking at, you, really, you don't even notice it. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. much colder in this room than it is in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I'm going to move on to 5D then. And that's landscaping project with the HOA, the, the Point Homeowners Association. So this is a sub HOA that exists down there around the point, in the point behind the gate. Um, so we've been communicating back and forth, um, kind of re recollecting and putting back, putting the pieces together about where, where everything's been left. The board, their board has changed over, our board has changed over. Um, we have an agreement with them to uh, they own the, the traffic circle. They own all the area and the land around the traffic circle. So outside of the, the sidewalk that goes around the traffic circle that creates a circle um, up against their wall, they own all of that land. As soon as you cross into the traffic circle, they own everything, the center and everything around it. But this, this board in the past has uh, developed an agreement with them where we have an easement, a landscaping easement, and are expected to landscape that that area and irrigate that area. Um, the only thing that's not included, I think, is power and light lighting. Correct. Um, and so we know that we just removed a, a, a massive, tree. massive tree from the center the center island. Um, we are obligated to uh, to landscape in accordance with any of the deed restrictions and any of the uh, rules that they've created around landscaping. So it's a little bit of a touchy um, situation. I need to get back together with them and collect any rules and, and deed restrictions that they have for landscaping in their area to make sure that any landscaping that we do out there complies with that. Well, which we've done with the tree. We don't have to put a new tree in or anything like that, though, right? Like... Don't have to. I don't think we have to do anything, no. Um, and there's still a lot of trees there. It's not like it looks like it's missing anything. Okay. Okay. Any questions about that? Before we move on, I just wanted everybody to be aware of that. So I'm in discussions with those guys right now. Uh, further, anything further for the outreach? All right. So moving on, we'll go to uh, Finance and Audit Committee, line item number six. All right, this one will be quick this time. Um, we'll have a bigger update in January. Um, we're working with Nugget on getting the new QuickBooks and everything up and rolling. So the reporting is a little bit limited for this meeting. Um, but we will work through the budget. It sounds like we've got some, uh, some stuff to think about how we're going to fit into the budget here for next month. Um, but going through the board pack, I didn't see a total for the checks, right? It, I, I didn't. I couldn't okay. get it to reprint that. Uh, there's two checks that are not in there, or three actually. Uh, two invoices that came in for the Travis County Central Appraisal District that need to be paid by the end of the month. Uh, one is for six seventy six thirty nine, 
and the other is for 72701. Those are different than the last two things in the board pack. Um, yeah, these came in after I had the packet ready. But these are different than I think Kelly put these in from the city of Travis, the appraisal people. Uh, mm -hmm. Acts assessor and collector. Of yeah, that's, that's, that's different. different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. And then the other uh, invoice that's not in the packet is my bill. So, is which one? Uh, my bill, Tomco's bill for 5000 even. Isn't it in the invoices? No. Oh, it, it was in the invoices. Oh, it's not in the check pile? It's either? not in the check pile. Oh, got it. Okay. <laughs> so, got it. Okay. Yes. So let's do this. And so we'll go through. This is 6A um, for the payment of the district's bills, invoices, and director's fees. Um, so under 6A, page 55, I guess you can see the director fees. This is October and November because we didn't do October last month. Um, let's see, October 3,978, November 4,420. Um, there's a schedule there for everyone to see um, everyone's times of when they are working on oh, you. Let me know if anything's missing. We can do a catch up next month if needed. Um, what page did you say that is on? 50, uh, 55 of 64. Oh, no, actual The board oh, no, yeah. receipts. So the top of the spreadsheet is just the individual, each sort of daily fee, and then the bottom it's summarized by month. And then real quick, um, Terry's already signed up online. I've got your check. Jason and David, I sent y'all an invite. Mm -hmm. Y'all will get that set up for your direct deposit, and these will get directly put in the bank. Oh, you're ready to do that now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All I, put I need in, is I your banking information. Today, so. <coughs> yeah, I got about halfway through it and then couldn't get logged back in, so I'm going to try it again. Yeah, you just need, just for the direct deposit, I just need that Thank info you. in there. Thank you. Good night. Take one to Robert. Um, you know, one thing I'd like to see on this is a year to date. Can we do there is a year to date? I just kind of left because it didn't fit. Ah, okay. So, there is a, on the actual spreadsheet, and it's done out by, by individuals like yeah. fiscal year to date, right? Yeah, if you go into vendors, directors' fees, as you can see, the mm -hmm. 30 spreadsheet on it. So I will, uh, if there's no questions, I'll make a motion that we approve the director's fees for October, totaling 3,978, and separately for November for 4,420. Second. Discussion, concerns? All in mm. favor? Aye. 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 Do we need one to pay the bills? Yeah, I'm gonna just sort of, I guess read through these. I think this is gonna be the easiest way. Um, so page 58 of the pack, 58 out of 64, you'll see a list of the checks that are going out. Um, we are working though to make everything ACH and automatic payments. We have L LRI's information. So we're working with Frost to get that tightened up. But for this one, there's going to be some checks. So I will, I guess I'll just read these off for approval. I'll read them all. So I'll make a motion that we approve following checks. Um, Balboa Services, 14595 Landscape Resources, $84,789.22. Aqua Permits for $2,000. Uh, elite Computing. $1,454.38. Uh, 
Carlton Law Firm, $5,326.25. LCRA, $522.63. Aqua Features, $568. Um, not listed here, but Tumco for $5,000. And uh, Travis County Central Appraisal District. Is there two checks or one? There's amount? two checks. Uh, one one amount is six seventy six thirty nine, and the second amount is seven twenty seven oh one. Okay. And then last question is: Do we need to these fees on the last two slides, Kelly? Those are deducted from our proceeds, right? So we don't need to pay. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. So then I'll make a motion that we pay all those checks I just mentioned um, tomorrow. I guess. A second. Any further discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Nugget, you and I can get together to move cash around tomorrow to get it in the right Yes, account. we definitely That's need some. Nice <laughs> um, can I ask you a question about the aqua permits? Sure. Yes. I know that we're not going to go in depth about any, in, any of these, but is that the permit thing for the dock? Yes. That's for the redesign, the shrinking. Yeah. And I noticed that it just said retention. It wasn't, there wasn't any kind of... Uh, any kind of quote or bid or any discussion other like you know what kind of no there <clears throat> the total cost is going to be around five thousand to have them redo it this was the uh kind of the down payment to get them kind of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. we can go into it in more during yeah. the doc, doc or do you want to make sure that okay. no this is this is fine okay um so that was that's 6a i don't have anything else on bills director's fees anything I don't think so. All right. 6B budget amendments. I think we'll we'll try and either get the meeting. I'm guessing we'll do a special sort of budget meeting with everyone maybe after the next board meeting to give us time to get everything set up with Nugget um, and with the holidays. Yeah. But I do think we need to sit down with all the landscape projects, um, with what we're going to do with the fence, whatever we decide to do on that. Um, and how we're going to have to adjust. Well, that. and if we're going to discuss, if we're going to have the fence discussion, that might not have to be first. Before. Might have to be before. Yeah. Exactly. So I, we can coordinate when we do it, but I think we can do sort of a, a more focused budget meeting, like you said, in January. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. It, what worries me here is I'm, I'm, we just approved an eighty-five thousand dollar check to LRI, and our our monthly's been running pretty high. But if we had this monthly number every month, the LRI bill would eat up one hundred percent of our budget, our annual budget. No, I understood. But LRI, we've been underspending the last two years mm -hmm. by two to three hundred thousand dollars because we weren't getting these projects done. Right. So right. This, this, this has a, been a bit we're going through the exercise of rebaseline yeah. in the neighborhood. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Because it hasn't been. It hasn't. Mm -hmm. been You're right. right. Right, they. I think this board has been this this body's been squirreling away money to pay for the wall, right, and to ultimately have to have to have to afford afford fifty percent of that or whatever of that, mm -hmm. right. And so they've been. Other areas of the neighborhood have been dilapidated because they're they're not getting. The yeah, I'm not su suggesting that we're doing anything wrong there. I think that these are all smart, but we just need to let's want to have our finger on the pulse a little better. Oh yeah, for sure, and I I think you know. Scott and I agree that's that's absolutely in our best interest to outline. Mm -hmm. This is what we can reasonably spend. Mm -hmm. And, and like part of the new QuickBooks setup is we'll have much easier access to look at stuff yeah. real time too. So it will be easier. So is Aqua is the Aqua permits one coming out of the dock budget? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. And then we'll table the five year strategic plan as well, six C. I didn't have anything else finance audit related, like specifically. We have a couple. I mean, in, that... unless we want to just talk, talk about the investments. Um, I oh, mean, it's yeah, yeah. it's the next page after yeah. the those list of checks. Honestly, uh, Nugget, I'm not sure how much time you have to spend to put together the schedule, but I think that we probably can get a, a schedule off of Frost that would make it where you don't have to do the type of redundant work. Oh, that'd be cool. Actually, I just type, I get Frost's schedule and type it in here. And Takes me all of about 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Well, it, it, I just don't want to have to, to 
do work that's yeah. If you, if it's off the frost schedule, we can just yeah. look at the frost schedule, and then not save you twenty minutes each time. Like if the report's on frost, let's just do that. For our investment summary, is every every this? quarter you've got to have quarter. something that's signed. Right, we can still the, approve it. Yeah, so. yeah. So I mean, y'all, you can work the monthly however you want, but just make sure at least every quarter you've got a report that's signed by the investment officers that mm -hmm. this board is approving. Can you just sign the frost statement though? Like, is that not sufficient? Um, it's there is certain there are there are certain I'll try that again there are certain um, things that you're supposed to have in your report written out and so I don't know what the frost report looks like uh, Nugget you you would probably know but you know it, it's basically you're saying and it may very well have all these uh, the things I can think of off the top of my head is where is it what was the principal what was the amount earned you know at the beginning what was the amount earned at the end you know. Uh, and and then there's a statement that you have to have that you're complying with your your investment so why policy. Not have everything why wouldn't that spot, be right? your signature as head of finance? No, it's got to be the investment officer, which is Nugget, and I think you. Mm -hmm. As soon as I, I go through that it's fund just, training, yeah. yes. <laughs> so it has to be one of one of you. But yeah, it's. And I do need to get. Do I need to get approved to have to spend the money to go through that? I think no. it's two hundred seventy-five dollars. Go to it. Send it. Get it, bring a receipt. Yeah, okay. you're you're allowed to be reimbursed for things like that. So. Okay, is it in Houston? It's in uh, the one I'm looking at is in Dallas, uh, so it's University of North West, Texas. Fifty-five cents a mile. Yeah, fifty-five cents a mile, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Per diem. Well, actually, his per diem. He already gets his per diem. Right. He doesn't get additional per diem. Right. Does right. he get, we'll does he get lodging paid for? Yeah, you'd think so. Yeah, right. he could he could yeah. have that lodging reimbursed. That's understand. that would be a reimbursable cost. Okay. I'll just stay with yeah. my son. <laughs> well, whatever. You can, you can, you can yeah. I'm not going to. I'm not going to drive up expenses on, on this. It's, but it's available for you to do that. If you had to. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. It's up to you to do that. So I don't remember the last time we approved the investment schedule. Do we need to do it this meeting, or is it? Um, you should do it at least quarterly. I, I there was a time where y'all were doing it uh, every month. Every, every month. month. Yeah. And well, so I would say that so maybe we do this since it's December and we'll do the next one. Yeah, and it's yeah, always I would say if you do it just by <clears> your, <throat> your fiscal quarter, mm -hmm. you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, 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 I'll make a motion that we So um, we but we're not on the fiscal quarter right now. No. January is a January. Quarter, so you don't really need to do it tonight if you oh, want to. So okay, we'll, we'll wait. December. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because and, and you'll have you'll have the, the okay, accurate yes, amounts that, that can be plugged into the report at that point. So we have a I think we have a um, million dollar tranche that's getting ready to mature here at the 28th of the month i've already talked to um to frost and since it's going to be the middle of the holiday season i said look just roll that into the into the money marketing um fund it's going to earn 4.4 4.5 percent and i said then we'll at the beginning of the year then we'll make a decision on, on where we'll, we'll put it in more permanent um securities yeah and, and we talked also about you know, making these um, smaller tranches, you know, maybe 250, 300 a piece and, and even them out and, instead of having some big and some small. Yeah, the other thing we'll have to look at is our PNC tax account should start getting some money in it. And we do need money in the checking account. We still don't know exactly how to close that. We're just going to leave it open for this year. Okay. But do we know how to notify Travis County? To switch? I, will. I think we just wait until they pass now, but. Yeah, I'll call D tomorrow, the girl I deal with down there, and ask her, see if she knows. Okay. My my suggestion is we don't tell them anything until March or whatever, when the bulk of the money is in. Mm -hmm. At this point, I, I wouldn't want to. No, I'll just ask for the process. Yeah, see what the process we can is. figure it out. No but as far as I can tell, you don't need additional monies into the checking account right now. I mean, you uh, fed it you 150. The account. Um, PNC is short. because. You're still writing checks out of PNC. Nope. Everything's come out of frost. I'm doing frost. Uh, when we after we're done writing checks today, we'll have nine thousand in the checking account. Okay. Well, we've got a hundred thousand in, in cash that's yeah, ready to be moved. Talk so, to Jody and moving that if over. If you need to move. Okay. We'll have to check the bank. The bank rack has some of it coming out of PNC. So we'll just have to look at that. Uh, I'll, I'll double check, but uh, I think the last checks we wrote were the board of director checks. Okay. Yeah, no, that's the idea. Move everything away. Yeah. So that's perfect. Okay. Um, that's yeah, it. Finance and audit side. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. Short and sweet this time. 
Um, so how about, and, and you may have breezed over the 6B, did we want to make any of those budget adjustments? I know we put it off and tabled it last month. I think it'll be easier to do next month when we have the schedule up. And we can sort of see like, okay, at least what we've spent. So next so month next or meeting. if we get a special session? Well, I think my thought would be we do the January meeting, figure out if we're approving the fence and all that. And we can do some budget adjustments, but then we can do a meeting with you guys afterward to figure out what the what. The so you don't think we should have a special session to discuss the the uh, wall stuff before we're expected to vote on it next month? Could depending on how quickly we're going to have all the schedules ready with the holidays next week and everything like that in the new year. Because when's our meeting going to be? Uh, when you're traveling, the eleventh. Do you know what day you're leaving town? Said you were traveling yeah I'm, i leave wednesday but i'm back on like the 29th okay. so i'm back like maybe the first week in january uh, we're gonna say i'll get with you monday and we'll look at where we're at okay what is that because i do we need do need to move some money and i don't know that i'm so oh, money up. yeah money we can do tomorrow to the basics yeah. yeah oh yeah i'm sorry no we we're, were talking about the special session that we're going to address a couple of bullet items mm -hmm. and have hash out workshops, conversations. Um, could we do that sometime in the, the week of the first through the fifth before our, I'm free. before the, our, our regular session on the 11th? There's something, we gotta make sure we have room for the sugar bowl. <laughs> the Alamo bowl, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> That bowl that Texas is going to lose. Yeah. No, that bowl that Texas is going to win. That Well, and I know what you're saying <laughs> because you don't make bowl game every year. You, you, you gotta, oh. You got to focus on the years you do make. Hey, man. Well, it's a celebratory <laughs> week, right? No. Yeah, well, yep. Um, Keep wearing my burnt orange. The early of the second week would be better for me, like the 8th, or eighth ninth, 10th, ninth, somewhere in there. Like those days before the mud meeting would, is actually cleaner for me. Yeah, my question is this is... And then we would make budget amendments the, on the 11th. So we could discuss stuff and then we'd have more info to make the amendments. Yeah. The meeting. We could do that. Yeah, simply because my biggest ask is going to be that we get through the landscaping and the budgeting for the landscaping. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest adjustment for all this stuff. Yeah. So we'll need to have that discussion before we make the budget amendments on the 11th. Okay. So that could work. Maybe put out an invite if you don't mind. Put out an invite for like the 8th, 9th, 10th. Any preference? So Monday is the eighth. That's the day the kids go back to school. Right, and that's what I was kind of thinking. Is what we can do. So that. we're Once kind of skipping to. Yeah. I'm good with that. Twelve. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it because we're in the middle of the budget conversation. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Do we need to up the heater budget? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> does, um, does it actually work? It's usually reasonable in here, but yeah. My preference would be the ninth, if, if, if we're taking preferences. Yeah, I'm indifferent eighth or ninth, so it doesn't matter to me. You were the eighth. Yeah, I'm indifferent coach, as well. I coach a basketball team on the eighth, um, and a softball team on the on on the tenth. So the so ninth, I got. <laughs> yeah. Is this the one that you wanted to call the workshop? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so we'll put together, uh, we'll have the standard agenda, but we'll put together just a very abbreviated bulleted agenda for that. Well, and I, you know, if it's just budget based things, um, yeah, we can do that and I'll run it by you. Yeah, be super it just, we won't have this entire, you know, all the yeah. subcommittees and all that stuff. We'll just have the, the individual bulleted items. Um, but it, I think I go, yeah. Let's continue to kick that around on email and we'll come up with a very specific agenda. And I'll check on the clubhouse availability. Yeah, I was gonna say. That's, yeah, that's the other thing is that the HOA typically meets the Monday after we're in town, uh, after we're in here. So, so that we're, we're in the clear there. Hopefully. We should be good on that one, yeah. Yeah. David got cold and went home. <laughs> okay. So coming back from 12. Coming back from 12. Anything further for the Finance and Audit Committee before we move on? I think that was it for six. I think we're good. You said short and sweet. We spent an hour on it. So 
We spent like 25 minutes, which is okay. much less than normal. Uh, we'll move on. Seven. Preserve committee. Nothing on the preserve committee this month. Oh, well, that's short and sweet. That, was that short is sweet. short and sweet. That's how you No do. update on that Boy Scout project? I do no, have one. I, I've been thinking I need to follow up on that, but anyway, go ahead. I do have one little thing about the preserve. There's, if, if you take the, the trail, you know, you go down the hill down so here. Maybe. This, this trail right here? Second. Yeah, the big okay. one. Okay. And you know how you make a left at the, at the bottom of the hill and you take the small little little trail? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're called. I don't know what it's. Know anyway, there's a tree that has come down and it's um, not oh. all the way blocking it, but it's probably about like right here. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's, it's big enough to where it looks like a hazard because um, it's rotting. So I don't know okay. if we need to call in reinforcements to kind of... How far down the... It's not very far. Um, we're in the clear right now, right? We, there's no restrictions on us. Yeah, we can go in until February 1st. Yeah. I'm... I would volunteer to do it. I, I know that some get out some frustrations. Yeah, you would probably <laughs> volunteer to do it. And yeah, so yeah, thanks for letting us know. That mm -hmm. yeah, I, my worry is it's going to fall down on somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, was this the right part of the conversation? No, this is. Is okay. it is it something that will require? Is it in its place or high enough that will require like special equipment or is it? No, we're just it, talking about doing what chainsaw. You, you and I did before. Yep, that's okay. About like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Making a go chainsaw down something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did have one update. I don't even know if it's finance though on the Christmas tree thing. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I was approved to spend money last month. So, to give you guys an update, we went back and forth with. Um, this will TBS. fit into five. This will fit into five. Is this a five? C. Okay. Five C, which is outreach, collaboration with other entities. This is a discussion about the TDS contract. I, I'm fine with it being under A because he's he spending money. Oh, okay. So right. well, it relates to money that was it's approved to, to be spent. Right. So we went back and forth. So when they sent us the contract, they had a restriction that the trees couldn't be more than four and a half feet tall. What? Yeah. So. I, I, we went back to him and he sort of said, this is what we do with everyone and no one has a problem getting the trees picked up. We weren't super comfortable with that answer. So we went back to him again and what he clarified was what he was offering us was a green like environmental solution where they were going to pick up the trees and mulch them and get rid of them in a very environmentally friendly way. Not just the tree pickup. So we asked sort of, well, what's the tree pickup solution? So what he said is starting, and I'll get the exact dates, but starting say December 26th for like one month, they will pick up the tree with your garbage on any garbage pickup, provided still subject to the four and a half foot restriction. Now, I don't think it's enforced that tightly. It's sort of what he said in the point, but the contract specifically is worded it needs to be cut to four and a half feet. If it's a four and a half foot. Well, so what he said though is, <laughs> exactly. no, so what he said is they do this same service for everybody and he wouldn't say it, but they pick up all the trees. So, so I think if you have a five or six foot yeah, tree. So you throw it out there. Up. If they don't take it, then you keep it an extra week. You call David because he's at his chainsaw. He comes over. It I'm, I'm, it's a new business. I'm going to go and just make one cut. <laughs> Exactly. There's five no, seconds at so, your house, he can have it, and they'll it, take it next week. It, 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 you know, we're, we're being lighthearted about it, but I have been back in the preserve before. There are places where people have dumped their Christmas tree back there. So there no, is a, a legit environmental concern. Really? Yeah. Um, like still decorated and everything? I don't know if it's still done, <laughs> but I've, I've been back, back there behind uh, Sterling Panorama. And um, I remember when Stephen Knuff was talking about putting in a entrance to the preserve over there on the fence. I still think we should. That's a good, no, good I don't, I don't think we should. But anyway, <laughs> at any rate, I, I was looking back through there, and there were like there were dumped Christmas trees. Like, and they didn't still have the decorations on them. That people had taken mm -hmm. their decorations off. We're like, well, I don't know what to do with it, so they just go dump wow. it in. Yep. Wow. So that there is an environmental concern when it comes to picking. 
Also, I guess we could just put them in the ponds and do like a bass pond. Yeah, I think that was that was no, voted down do last that. the last meeting. That. I think Nugget spoke up on that one. I'm a Nugget, but you know. So, 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 so if you have if you have an eight foot tree and you cut it in half, are they going to take the two four foot segments? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And chances are, so if you have a five or six foot tree and don't cut yeah. it, they're probably still going to take it. So I think his point was, if it's a regular Christmas tree, they'll take it. If it's a too big a one, the stump's too thick, and it might damage the truck and bend something, and then the truck has to be taken out of service. Okay. Uh, so that's why they don't want the big trees going right in there. there. So. They say four and a half feet. I think they pick up the five or six foot ones and don't worry about it. But I think they probably would not pick up an eight foot one because but the, but the be benefit tough. of that is we don't have to pay. It's all it's included. Well, so I think what we might want to do, and I wanted to get everyone's opinion, is I don't know if it's worth paying for the special pickup when we have this. It's more of an environmental thing, and maybe we want to do that. Um, but I think we need to understand the four and a half foot restriction because I think that's going to be a concern for people. And we can do that for free. We can just send, so that note that I typed up that I shared before, mm -hmm. I would change and sort of focus on Christmas trees and recycling and all that just to remind people they will pick up your tree. I don't know what I'm going to say about the four and a half foot restriction. Um, but it would be Yeah, exactly, right? Um, but tell people they can put it out with a regular trash right. and it'll right. get picked up from. I would say Boxing Day. It might not be as familiar with the term. Uh, Boxing Day till the end of January, and they'll pick it up for you, and away it'll go. Hmm. And we can test it that way. And if they, if you throw the six foot tree out, if it'll pick it up, then you got to cut it in half. And yeah. Take it next time, right? It'll be pretty easy to figure out. Just give him David's telephone number. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, I'll tell, tell him Terry's. And we have a guy it's, it's, that'll come do it for you. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut it in half. Mud does on the chainsaw. Yeah. So, so anyway, I guess the point being. I don't think we should spend the money on the special pickup. Let's try and do this regular pickup, and then we'll reassess for next year. Would be my suggestion. That sounds but like a plan. We don't need a resolution for that, do we? Do we? Because we're not doing anything, right? No, you're just, just not spending the money that yeah. was approved. So we don't so need to kill. Okay. We don't need to kill the prior approval or anything like that. No. Okay. No. okay. okay. So good. Actually, That's a good resolution. Well done. Not spend money. <laughs> no, well, not just that. I mean, it, everybody's happy on that one. Can we use the three thousand dollars for a holiday party? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> as long as only two directors show up. <laughs> well, no, we can all be there. In a you can all be there for a party. Mm -hmm. uh, What's that? A social event for a social event. You can all be present. As long as we don't discuss this. Correct. Got it. I had one district that every year do a Christmas party. It's Big shindig. Oh, and right. invite constituents and all that, or just oh, yeah. board oh, yeah. members, homeowners, mm -hmm. residents, whatever. Oh, they just do a big party. When yeah. is it? They don't do it anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> One of the board members. I mean, it, maybe on. we should talk about that for 2024. I think we should. I've had people ask why we hey, don't decorate more and do that sort of thing. I brought you. So. <laughs> <laughs> True, but it's not a uh, beverage. <laughs> That's made with barley and hops. Okay. All right. I can get I can get some of the liquor donated. So moving on. Anything further for preserve? <laughs> That's on. way moving off topic. <laughs> Sorry. Anything further should... for preserve? Move on. Nothing from preserve. Okay. So we're moving on from seven to eight. Communications committee. Uh, any update that's required with the district, the district digital account updates, if necessary. I didn't have anything communication related other than. Um, I'll look to send something about TDS and include an update on the trees, encouraging people to put their trees out. I don't have any updates on anything we've done. Yeah, that's so that's 8D, and I also have some for 8D as well. Um, so the we discussed it a little bit earlier, but I'll put out that I think we're ready to go with the construction rule communication. Mm -hmm. I think that's ready to go. So uh, I noted here that we wanted to send it out on the 20th. So I'll get with Doug on the 19th and ask him to send it out the following day. I guess that's what next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then whenever Jody's ready with the with the uh, TDS communication to go out. Um, and then David's going to provide some stuff to the HOA for the, the newsletter. 
other than that, any other sure. communications that anybody knows about? Actually, let me let me back up for a second. So some of the uh, proposals that we uh, approved this evening around the College by Pond, we discussed it may be a good idea to also put out a communication uh, about that to mm -hmm. try to keep kids off the off the the area that we're going to resod and the, the, essentially the construction it might area. Be a good one to sneak in the HOA letter. Yeah, I think so too. Ah, uh, yes, it might be a better avenue for that because it's short and sweet, and we're doing stuff that we want people to hear about. So. And if people don't like the suggestion, they can get mad at the HOA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Call Pat. So, do you want to put together what? <laughs> <laughs> so, put together um, a blurb for. Um, um, this is enough to myself. A blurb for the HOA newsletter. Yeah, I'm just wondering how how far back we want to go on some of these projects that we've been working on over the year that or that have been accomplished. So we talk about taking care of the dead trees and putting new. Well, I thought this was just to sort of announce we're doing a project at the pond. That's what mine is. going to be sodding. That's what mine is. Yeah, that, okay. I'm just going to reference that specific project okay. around the pond because I really want to draw focus on because. The reason why we're having to do one of the reasons why we're having to do it is because there's such heavy foot traffic off the paths, and so mm -hmm. when we redo it, I don't want there to continue to okay. be heavy foot traffic. But I think rather than going, rather than trying to go into rears and say we've done that, we've done that, we've done that, whenever these types of projects come up that we think may be highly visible, then we make a note to get them into the newsletter. Okay, and this will obviously be the first one, and then we can continue that trend if you like. So are you thinking about like a permanent fence or like I'm thinking like those little metal poles with the little Not chain permanent. that it doesn't really stop anything, but it's it's, sort of it's semi traffic. right. Yeah. It's semi permanent, but it will come down once that it will come once down. all that vegetation is is taken hold and we don't have to worry about sods. Being not worried about the kids trampling it down next year, like all the grass, the new grass. Not necessarily. No. The reason why it's in such, I mean, we discussed it earlier, so I won't rehash it completely, but the reason why it's in such bad shape is because it was never focused on, it was never sodded. It was, it was always just natural grasses and whatever, and that stuff didn't make it through the hard summer that we had. Also, it's potable water, and it was one of the valves that was turned off for months, yeah. right? Mm. And so that whole area that was turned off didn't get irrigated for months during the summer. So... Interesting. They have them all open now, I think, though. Yes, they're all they're all active now. Although they're watering nothing. I mean, they're watering junk because it's that's why we're Yeah, replacing. you get some moisture in the soil, too. It's a terrible idea. Before yeah. You saw it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, those were all seeded when the ponds were built. Seeded, yeah. yeah. And With natural had grass. stuff too. growing, and then that was it. And then the battle started to develop. But that's water. That's money we don't need to spend. Yeah, twenty years of yeah neglect. Yep. So is this is this a request for sealed proposals? Is that part of the communications discussion? No, this is a, that's going to be the the under the dock. The dock. Oh, you talking okay. about? All right. The dock stuff. Yeah. Um, well, that stuff is our. This is our cue for the landscape architect, architect, which is Jason. Is that what you're referring to? No, I was no he's looking at the thing that I've the next, got in the, the package. The next page in the in the, uh, in, uh, yeah. in the package. Yeah. And I, I thought it's that a was sample. Of, it's item ten. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Sorry. Got nine first, I guess. Right? Um, Doug, anything from your perspective on communications? Uh, Do you have an update on the website and how that all turned out? Website. Um, Did you completely redo it off of the off of WordPress or take it off that platform? Or? No, I did have to restore the back. Uh, after that, the back. Was, was a combination of malware that was placed on the hosting server because of so packing up the security. Yeah, 
Okay. Okay. Good. Um, how are we doing on uh, on using your ten hours per month? Do you have an opinion on that? Because of the website stuff, probably. Yeah. Generally, we're Okay. Um, and the reason why I ask you that is because there's there we've we've talked about a couple of things. We definitely have the longer term objectives of getting our uh, beefing up the website to get some of the stuff that's required to be posted. Um, then in addition to that, Jody and I shared a, uh, that we, I found a late, not late point mud, but a, a different mud that had like a, what is a mud type of page? And that, th those type of requests is what we'd also like to give you to work on. Um, and, and it would be, you know, copying someone else's page and we could change the pertinent details for late point mud, but it, just, it would essentially be building another page on the website that better explains what we do and what a mud's for and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and we kind of got away from using the, the communication ongoing requests communication spreadsheet. I'd love to get back on that if we can, and we can. Jody and I can discuss something, and if we are in alignment, we will put it on that spreadsheet. And then, if you need to have a, a clarifying conversation with one of us about that, then then by all means. But if not, if you can just take off on it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only other thing is. I did look at it this month because we already had overage uh, this past month. But this month, uh, probably set up a little uh, another session like we did last month with uh, both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll need to revisit that. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll be with that one. I don't know what time. And just perfect that process so that when it comes up again, we're, we're ready for it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, and we can. We don't even need a session <clears throat> session for that. You just have the communications committee and maybe a couple of volunteers to come in. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll move on from communications. If there's nothing further. Procurement committee. That looks like I have a yellow envelope over there. You do. <laughs> yeah. So y'all got a response to your uh, request for qualifications for a landscape architect. I'm going to give that to Jason to open. Do I open it now? Yes. You can open it now. Well, do I have to? I mean, I just, is, is there like something ceremonial? Well, <laughs> we said officially we would open it in an open meeting. Oh, okay. And so I would like for you to open it. And that way, and really, what you're going to do is open it, say who who provided the RFQ response, and then of course you'll need to take it and review it and that kind of stuff. But I have here from KFM Engineering and Design. Looks like two copies of a bound. Um, document response to request for qualifications for landscape architecture services for the Lake Point Municipal Utility District. Um, obviously, I have not reviewed this because it was sealed. I just opened it. Do and the two copies need to go to specific places, or can I have one of them? Um, it would be to, well, he's the only one on procurement, but yeah, uh, Jason can share if he wants to. Okay. Yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Do you need two copies? No, I do not. The, we specified two copies, right? That's why mm -hmm. they included those. Yeah. Excellent. So I believe that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like the best course of action would be to review this between now and the next meeting, and then we can uh, make a decision on it. Next right, meeting. right. This so you're looking, you're looking to see, uh, according to the statute, you're looking for you know, most qualified to do the work, um, and then if, if you find that they're qualified and the board agrees, then you uh, work with them on an agreement for them to perform the work. What kind of work is it for? Sounds good. I was just gonna ask. This is for the. That project was for that big defense, project. That that yeah. It is. It is, but it's for more for a, a, like establishing a relationship with an engineering firm that can do that anytime we need it, right? 
Hmm. Yeah. Hopefully we use yeah. That it was it forward. was for the one project that was going to be large, but with the eye toward you would then have them who and you could go to them and say, hey, we want to do these other things. Can you design this for us and, and help get the you know those kind of projects going? So that's do, the. Do we know where we received this from, Nugget? Did you manage to procure this, or was this just from a general advertisement? <coughs> you did. I think it was from Kelly. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. All right. Excellent. You can hang on to that, too. I will. Thank you. Okay. All right. Perfect. So 9A and 9B taken care of? Yes. Anything further for procurement? Before I move on? So because we just we determine the next steps, and so uh, there you go. Doc committee, line item number 10. Okay. So uh, we approved the initial a deposit for uh, aqua permits. They're the ones that helped us with our initial permit to build the the boat and dock slips and or dock and boat slips and that whole project. And so I went back to them and asked them about um, getting a, a redesign um, to shrink the project. And they have done that. I didn't bring anything tonight to be able to share, but I can show you all if you want me to. Um, so is presented. aqua permits just doing permitting or are they an architect or what, what are they? They, they're not an architect. The, the guy I'm working with is not an architect, but he's, he's a draftsman. And so he took the, the same drawings that they had in their computers, um, from the prior time and adjusted them to downsize and also changed the placement a little bit of the, of the dot, given that they're smaller, um, smaller sizes. And then at once that's uh, approved, then they'll go back to the city and have them reaffirm uh, the approval so we can move forward. Okay. Uh, I will tell you that one of the difficulties I've had in talking to different dock builders, because um, I've talked to one pretty well at length and then a couple of others, is that not having strong uh, designs at hand really makes it hard to have a good conversation. Right. Uh, you're just kind of talking generalities. And um, that's why I said we got to stop. I got to figure out how in the world I can get this redesigned. Mm -hmm. And so um, talked to them a number of times and they've come back and they've given, um, I mean, I don't mind pulling it up if you want to see it. Got two seconds. Probably a lot easier than, um, come on. My battery's absolutely dead. And while David's looking for that real quick, um, I've got phone calls into the electrician working on the electrical permit from City of Austin, and I have not heard back from him. Um, and kind of on, on the electrical um, aspect of it, I've talked to a couple of dock builders about it and also the guy with uh, aqua permits. And they're thinking that since our electrical needs are gonna be so low that we probably could utilize a, a solar powered um, electrical um, design. And therefore we would, wouldn't have to run all that extra line from city of Austin. Mm -hmm. So we'd get off the grid. So mm -hmm. what are the requirements? Do you have a high level, what, an understanding of what the requirements are for the dock? Does it just have to have a nightlight? That's pretty much it. It's, it's pretty much the nightlight. We're not talking about big floodlights. Right. Um, and it can be as simple as a, um, like one of the, um, one of the solar powered um, traffic lights, a trap, like a, it can be that simple. Correct. Right? Like Correct. a self-contained solar powered yeah, and think, so my, you have to light the edges. I think the corner, like it needs the, to be you know, lit. The corners so need to be lit. Going by, so like boats can see. Oh, so maybe like two, corner, so two, like, one at each corner so or whatever. Because like, I don't know the design, the redone design, but. And, and the other thing is, if you know, one of the things I've asked for is that in the redesign, that I still want to have some element of contemplating building more of those dock slips if that comes about, and so. Um, 
make it more, more modular? So you could add Possibly, more? yeah. So at least it looks like it was one initial thought. It wasn't, doesn't look like it's an add-on. And they said that with uh, some of these high-end uh, boat ramps, and I'm not proposing this, but those don't require a lot of power either. The hydraulics don't. Uh, the old style that has the pole to twist the cable up, those require more power. Uh, these other ones don't. And if, so if you have a high dollar Mastercraft or whatever, um, you're not gonna need a, a lift that takes a lot of, um, a lot of power. So from yeah, my it's perspective, more air, it's, it's more of an air pump. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But you're not, but also you're not gonna look at having any slips down there that are, that require those because nope, I'm there's not, not gonna, gonna be any overnight parking. Nope, not at all. This right. is strictly boat data. slips, no it's roof. Yeah, it's data. It's not the light. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got to find them. I'm not sure why. The edges, like, yeah. yeah. Well, of course, that'd be the, just the safety. Yeah, exactly. I guess that makes sense. There isn't a lot of light and heat down there. So, do we want to continue down this route of trying to get? Austin I think we should still try and get traction since it okay. takes six months to get anything from Austin anyway. But if the contractors come back, well, as long as it's not costing us money or, or lots of effort. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, he has yeah, yeah. I'm actually so cold that my fingers are not working very well in this. I'm serious. Um, so you're not that far in that conversation. I'm going to let you drive this thing if you can. They were resubmitting all the forms. To so I don't know if they wanted to come over here and look at this. But you can see. Why don't you guys come over here? I'll, I'll what are you looking at? Yeah, you just put it in front of them. I can move over. The design? Or? Yeah, this is the design. My hands are so cold, I'm truly shaking to where I can't. I'm not working this. <laughs> so it's freezing in here. Okay, so here you can see the red where they've adjusted it. And this is the current. Um, I can't see from over here. Yeah, I need a little further so you can see. If my battery goes dead, I'm sorry. So what, what were you saying this red is? So <clears throat> this is where they were gonna have all those docks, those boat slips before. Right. That's now been taken out. And so they had this other, this is our current dock right there, that little dotted U. Okay. And the original dock slip or dock swim dock was gonna be here, that little bitty thing. And so what now it's gonna be, if you can see the red, it's gonna be move that way and it's going to be a hundred feet long which is just a touch longer than the one we have here mm -hmm. and then you're going to have boat slips over here and i've got it the detail down here so these are just x'd out because they're not going to still be there Uh oh, there went the battery. <laughs> Come on back. Come on back. Uh, no, nope, it, it says it's finished. Um, anyway, so what I've got is what I got planned is a hundred foot dock, right swim dock, and it can only go out thirty feet. That's that's the the limit, um, and then roughly. 50 feet of that dock is going to be covered, but not all the way up to 30 feet. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's going to be for, you know, picket tables and so forth like that. So rather than it being a, a hollow rectangle, it's going to be a filled in rectangle and it's going to be slightly longer than the one that's there now. Correct. And, 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 the, and the, the whole thing is going to be in decked. the same space. Do what? Roughly in the same space as the one that's there now. Mm, it's going to be, a little, closer, little bit, a little closer to the walkway, a little closer to the yeah, a little bit, stairs or whatever. right? Stairs. Mm -hmm. So the and then I'm keeping the same separation as the original plan was between that little uh, swim dock and the boat slips because I know that you mentioned that you wanted to have that separation between the swimmers and the boaters, and so this other um, boat slip dock is going to have an area for two boats, no lifts. No roof, just an area for you to embark and disembark. And um, and then you go up on land to come over to the swim dock? Yeah. 
and you say and you're saying it's like a normal standard roof shingle roof on that one no roof. no on the on the on this one no uh no it would be a metal a metal design so the, not standing seam but so you um, could put the solar panels on that roof or mm -hmm. incorporate a solar yeah now those aren't generator. in the design yet shingle. but that's what you do and and what uh what like what percentage of the dock would be covered by by roof 60 percent oh no it'd be maybe 30. so just the maybe one or two. Yeah, if you take a hundred it's going to be a hundred by 30. so that's mm -hmm. what three thousand square feet and then the covered part's going to be 50 by 15. so be half right 50. Hmm? No, because it wouldn't go all the way to the water. It would only be out 15 feet as opposed to 30, right? Right. So half of the width would be covered by the roof and then half the width. Half the, depth. right. Yeah, width, depth, depth. Correct. And half the depth yeah, would be covered. Yeah. Okay. yeah okay. And, well, I'm also, and I'm also keeping that, uh, the curved feature that you all wanted to mm -hmm. make sure that, dock, that boats don't dock there. Two boats, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm freezing. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, and I'm freezing cold. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so that is it still a floating dock, or is it? Is it? No, it's going to have to be a, a solid dock. So yeah, the city won't approve any floating docks. Yeah, the permit guy thinks, and you can clarify, but he doesn't think we'll have an issue getting the permit amended. He didn't. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see him face. He's like, yeah, it shouldn't be a big deal. Not at all. He he said, with, he goes, if you're trying to get something bigger, more grandiose. He goes, yeah, that might be a problem. He goes, but when you're coming in here and asking for something much smaller than what's yeah. approved already. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it might be premature to ask, but uh, uh, what time, time frame are we talking about? Um, or what goal do you have in mind? At this I'd point? like to have it done by next summer, before summer starts. 20, this 24? Mm -hmm. Oof. We think we can have it built by then? Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to have to jump through your hoops, which is where I'm coming in with that. Right. But <clears throat> given that it's so much a smaller scale, yeah. probably doable. And I have names for dock builders, so it, um, and they build docks, you know, year round. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm going to be able to, to get bids and that sort of thing. Jim Norris sent me one yesterday, too, out of the blue. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you talked to him or not. No, I haven't talked to him since our meeting. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, I do like the notion of not having to run electrical lines. Um, that was a big part of the cost. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. So are you still thinking $100,000 is doable? Well, the, the 100000 we had was really just to get things going. Oh. Okay. Um, no, I, I, one guy said it was going to be upwards of 800000 I was like, mm -mm, that's too much. But... Um, that does sound pricey. Yeah. So you don't have a you don't have a ballpark. No, because um, I just didn't have the design set in stone yet. Sure. Now that now that I have a kind of a design, and I can email it to you guys if you want to see it. I mean, I've got it. I sent it to you, didn't I? You can put I, it on. I'd say put it on the network and let us let us. Uh, there is a space for the dock on the network. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Add it to that, and then we can. I'll put we can that out there up. tomorrow morning. But the process is going to be the same as as anything with three competitive bids. Well, well, and it, it's driven by cost when you're talking about constructing something. And so now that I've got an idea of what you think the cost is going to be, you're going to fall in that category of needing mm -hmm. to have competitive sealed proposals which is required under the water code and and we publish you have to publish it in the newspaper and uh you publish it twice and then you know you get the proposals you open them and you go through that that process but before you can even publish and ask for proposals you've got to have your design because you have to be able to have the specs available obviously or mm -hmm. they don't know what to bid on which is right. when, when you were but you know when you're spitballing it and they're kind of giving you an idea mm -hmm. they're all going to say that to you which is you know without a design we don't know what we're bidding on right. and so right. obviously you've got mm -hmm. to do you know the design and then mm -hmm. uh the the publication uh in the newspaper and then open your proposals exactly what jason did tonight and then you go through the process after that um, but I put that draft proposal just in there so that you would see, mm -hmm. um, just what it looks like and what it would, you know, to be published 
we would, you know, massage the language of it to fit whatever it is. I just was making stuff up to right. to give yeah. you something that you could. So when understand. we have to publish it, mm -hmm. but David's <laughs> already spoke to some builders. Can we also send them directly? The mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so that'll yeah. make yeah. sure we should get Absolutely. better responses. Yeah, you can Absolutely. have a short list for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've probably got five names of dot builders right now. Well, that's I don't, really I don't have to use them all, but um, no, nah, but yeah, two of them are going to drop out, and then you're going to be left with three. Mm -hmm. But the but the, yeah, it, you know, once you publish, if you are if you know, you can send. You know, it, the the deal is everybody gets the same information. That's really what the deal is. Yeah. And then if anybody who wants to make a proposal, they seal it so that none of us know what each was each proposal was, mm -hmm. so that it's fair, and then they're all opened at once. So. That's the that's the over uh, yeah. executive summary of of how that would work. And given that you <coughs> scaled the project back, your timeline, you know, based on whoever mm -hmm. is hired uh, or contracted with, you know, but then you know they they have to meet the requirements. They're going to have to be bonded because it's that yep. size of a project, you know. So they're having yeah. to build that. We have to tell them that, which I think I had in the my draft. But you know, you just kind of give them that information up so that when they give you their proposal back, they've factored in, you know, those costs. Sure. Yeah. So. So if they are, I want to make sure we're abiding by all the rules of the preserve and so forth. If they are doing the building from the water side and not the dirt, they can do whatever they want to whenever, right? Yeah. Seem. You know, because that would be the the whatever they want to by whoever is in charge of the water you know it doesn't right. have anything to do with your preserve city of austin permits yeah. Which right yeah yeah so we've done that yeah, yeah. okay because I, I would like to not have all those people hauling yeah. all those materials down the side yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, i just don't want to have the traffic on the road and and so that's kind of a, one of the initial discussion points i have and they don't have a problem with that because it's easier for them if they've got a barge just barge it in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's cool. a benefit and, and that's something that we could add when we do our publication is that, you know, we, we want the water access, like we want the, access. it built from the water, right. you know, okay. to, because of the preserve, um, you know, so we can, we can massage, massage that. that language okay. to, to make that fit. But that's, you know, I just so, didn't, I didn't yeah. want you to get too far out without, mm -hmm. you know, knowing that we needed to go through no, this exactly. process. Yeah. A couple of things to add to that. So number one, we're, it will be a point especially if you're not starting this until March, the build, March, April timeframe, where they can't access the preserve, right? Unless it's an absolute dire emergency. And even then it's gotta be like a one-off thing. They can't regularly access it right? Because of, the, because of the restrictions. But then the second thing is, is, and it's probably too early to start talking about this now, but at some point we'll have to talk about making sure that the provisions are in this so that we don't end up in the same situation as we were a year ago with the wall. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I don't understand that. What, what do you so mean? I don't know how much I can detail I can go into or if I can go into any detail at all, but we had competitive bids on a wall. The previous board selected one. It didn't go well. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they never actually really constructed. There was some legal aspects back and forth. Um, so whatever provisions we need to discuss and put in there to make sure that that doesn't happen. We can try. I mean, yeah. you know, it can always happen, but yeah, whatever yeah. safeguards well, we can. The put last in. time seemed to be pretty bulletproof too, but I, it was an interesting set of circumstances. Yes. So anyway, too early to talk about it now, but once we once we get further down the road. But the other thing I'm, I want to make sure that we include in here is some um, our safety provisions. I mean, part of that's the lighting. Another one is having the things that you would see out here by the uh, the pool having. One of those uh, pole, big long poles and a and a maybe a, a oh, life yeah. ring or so with a rope, that sort of thing. Because um, yeah. we don't have that those type of safety mechanisms there now. Um, and I also ask about really putting cool. a a some kind of someplace where you could have a changing area, not have an, a door that you would close, but some place where you can at least you know have some privacy if you need to change. Yeah, almost like a. Outdoor beach shower without yeah. the water. Yeah, we need. We might yeah, be able to do a lake signage notifications. Showers. I don't know if that's legal requirements. Yeah. yeah, possibly. I mean, the only other thing is, you know, for people who want to, as long as they can charge their phones, things like that. 
Um, I do want to have enough electricity for something like that. But with, I'm serious. But no, it's also DC, and so it's it's yeah. nothing. When I ask about it, they're like, <coughs> you're not asking for anything special. But I do like the idea because most even natural <coughs> water areas that I go to now have the throw ring mm -hmm. there. Like even when I, go to I think it's a good idea. I just I worry the kids are gonna. Not right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We definitely have, have, have to have a plan around, around thirty days. Mm -hmm. basically. Put in your budget. Replace at least once. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. A month. <laughs> once a month. <laughs> yeah, and that's the other thing is I, I'm, I said I want to make it where kids can't jump off the roof into the water. So uh, that that they're not going to even come close can't to that. Avoid. No, this is they would have to be able to be like superhuman to be able to jump twenty yeah, maybe, feet out. Maybe in all seriousness, though, if that is a plan because kids are stupid. It might be better to go ahead and have the roof so it's not 15 feet away from the water. Because what you're going to have is some these teenagers are like to go down there and drink. One of them's going to decide to climb up on that roof, think he can clear the 15 feet, and then yeah, it's not going to end well. So maybe just put a slide. Natural <laughs> selection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just eliminate the uh, eliminate the jumping. Just we don't want to have to put that cleanup in our budget. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but that's that, those are you know okay. add-ons at the end, and so my main thing is just you know, are you guys okay with with what I'm proposing here? Everything, having everything so far sounds fine. You know, 100 foot long dock, which is about 15, 20 feet long than what we have now. Same depth out, about that much covered with a with a roof, and having that separate boat uh, docking area. And a couple of picnic tables or rocking chairs or something in the. Definitely rocking chairs. Yeah. We're gonna have to fit only thing that's between us and the dock is a little bit of a little bit of green. That's it. Figure that out. That's gonna be the fun part. Okay. Anything further about dock? I don't think so. All right, moving on. If you have any special requests, let me know. Uh, eleven. Ice and tax. under my item, guys, I just put the, the tax assessor's notice about what the collection fees will be. Uh, and as Jody noted, those fees are pulled uh, off the top before they deposit your tax collections into your account. So okay. and, um, that's pretty, just, I'm pretty sure they're different than any other number I've got. Like, oh, of course. Uh, this is I mean, every number they give us is different. This is you could. <laughs> but this is the real like, one, right? In they the real world, this. you could not work like this, where you just change the numbers every yeah. time you send something out. Like I know it, it's, it's it's the government, Jody. It's, <laughs> but it's insane. <laughs> Like this has our total revenue at 1.1 million this year, which I think is quite a bit higher than what we're actually expecting. Well, but hey, I'll get something tomorrow if there's something different. Like yeah, yeah, that it, most likely yes. Mm -hmm. Bonkers. Let's get it, let's get it. But this is the last one, right? Oh, uh, no, no. Oh, this month. It also says we have like 1,100 homes in the community too, so I don't know. I thought we had eight hundred and nine years. Oh, this is parcels, I guess. Right. Parcels. So well, parcels no, it's parcels, but it's but it's but it's five ninety nine plus four four ninety two. Yeah. Right. So it's too many. Can you tell me how? But I get a different number of the, uh, every time I get the report. Too. Well, that's that's including Google parcels in, in the oh, HOA. Man. That's including well, our parcels. Said, that's including. Wait, but even on the whole one, I can't find out. Oh really? You your count? Yeah, just like nine hundred and forty five. <laughs> The easiest, the easiest way to do that is call the HOA. How many water meters do you have in the lake? Okay, and then take it. away and the number that we have on our Yeah, because that's the ones they read. That's probably true. All right. And that's what it's supposed to be good for, too. Okay, so um, so these you said these are, are mostly just to call out that that's what that's our collection fees. Yes. Yeah, okay. that's that's informational for y'all. And just to know that that little bit's gonna come off the top. <clears throat> okay, is there a reason that these are continuing to be separated by month three and month five? Because that's the way the tax was done this year. Okay, so next we are year hoping we okay. are hoping if I can get an answer from somebody uh, over at the tax at the uh, appraisal district to be able to combine. Um, I've gotten crickets so far, okay. so I have um, some time, but we'll keep working on theory, it. In theory, if we ever did want to do a bond, we wouldn't want to do two bonds. Like mm -hmm. no, right? so no, you would not get this all. Up. Well, and, and um, Nugget, if it's not too much to ask, we probably should look through our existing vendors and start to try to try to 
uh, nail that down because I did notice on some of the invoices they're written to mud three, to mud five, yeah, or whatever. Ones, yeah, that are off that. And so when you get an invoice or expecting an invoice from one of our vendors, could you ask them to clean up the naming of our, of the, of our, uh, yeah, I kind of started on this process and I had this conversation with Joey about two weeks ago. Oh, really? I went to the PUA to get our name changed after we did our bank changing. Mm -hmm. It is going to take uh, an act of Congress to get it changed. I'm going to have to have probably board minute meetings and we minutes. Have, and, we have the resolutions on it. We have all that. Yeah. But yeah, just so to get all of that changed, it was. I think when we did the last approvals and signatories. Right. I think that one should cover it because it, it should. It should, it but lists. we've got to jump through a lot of hoops. Uh, some of the stuff goes back to Jennifer still being the contact for LCRA 20 years ago. Wow. When she worked for us. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I mean, we tell them, hey, they don't work here anymore. We need to take this off. And it just never happens. Yeah. Yeah. We'll work on it. Try and get everything switched to say Lake Point Wood. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, probably got to be a gradual thing and every time something comes in that reminds us that their mm -hmm. names need to be updated give them a call and ask them the next invoice you send okay uh sorry anything further for 11 no council no thank you okay uh moving on from 11 to 12 there were a couple of things we discussed about next future agenda items i think we discussed and got the feeling that we were going to call it on tuesday night uh night Yes. Is that what we were saying? Yes. Six, that's, that's okay. 6, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Uh, on the 9th. If that works. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Uh, I was going to call Lauren in the morning and uh, try to be sure we had yeah, six, 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 like point HOA fence, do we need an extra agenda point, or is that wrapped up under what we? Yeah, have? we. You well, that's going to definitely be on the agenda. The yeah. short, the the abbreviated agenda that we put together for the sixth. For the sixth, and and I would I would add it no. uh, under the um. Well, that's the a good question. Where we add it? Um, it's certainly not our facilities. I guess we'd leave it under outreach and and put it put it under that under the HOA item. Uh, yeah, I, just, I didn't know if we need a special bullet. I think it's a good idea. Way. It's it, it, you know so that you can discuss it and it, and approve what or not whatever you're going to do. Um, it, it'd be better to have it. Okay. I'm making myself a note. Yeah. And then I guess maybe, well, I guess it would be executive session maybe to discuss this contract she kept referring to because. Yes, I have thoughts on it, but I think it's better in executive session. Yes, and I haven't read it, uh, so I'll need to I'll need to find it and read it. You've read it, um, no? Yeah, but I. Oh, you're saying next meeting in executive yeah. session? Yeah, just to discuss it, because I how valid it would be, et cetera, and all that. Yeah, I think as a gesture of goodwill, we'll probably That's do something like, yeah. with them, but the, the implication that we're contractually bound to do it. I know didn't necessarily agree with those comments. Okay. okay. And I was going to take off, Jason, I was going to take off A under number nine, since we have the RFQs, and I was going to change the item to be that we'll, uh, you'll, the board will consider the response received and, and authorize, you know, negotiations or what have you, once, once you get to that, but at least give you that option. Those are the ones I could think of. All right. Um, you might want to add under 5A, you might want to add a second under one okay. discussion of the um, PUA oh, representatives uh, uh, objectives. Or, uh, board um, board directives, I guess, or however you want to put that. I'll write it down as board directives and we can play with the language. Okay. Yeah. We just want to be able to carve out space to discuss. Um, that makes sense. Okay. So January 9th, special meeting at 6 p.m. And then January 11th, your regular meeting at 6 p.m. 
Is that right, everybody? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's still correct. Just double check on the calendar. All right. And then can we add 6D um, approved quarter, quarterly approval of investment just so it's on the yes. and we'll just that way we'll get it for sure. Next okay. Uh, I don't know oh, exactly. Yeah, so we may shift the time is? depending on what Lauren says, but assuming we can get in, we'll use the normal time. It's 11705. It's not usually that busy. Although it's we were going to use this weekend. Time. We'll see. Yeah, you don't know. Oh, they might have yoga in here on Tuesday nights. You never know. <laughs> you can't displace the yoga pose. That's true. Can we just do it like simultaneously? <laughs> it doesn't have that. Really it may be hard to read our uh, our stuff when they bring the lights down and put the mood music I mean, this on. This is lit up. I know I could get it on that, but it's dead. Um, I, I just so, do question. Right Actually, we let's not move on from that was, topic because this okay, question is about that. Do we need Doug for that meeting? That's up to you for the special meeting. Yeah. That's up to y'all. You're not required to. to I mean, if, if if that's the case, why don't we just set up a, a, a laptop and and have it record on a broadcast to, to YouTube like we do now? Well, I'm not going to. I suggest we don't do the broadcast on YouTube on the 9th. I'm just wondering if he needs to be present for Rick, like actual voice recording or anything like that. That's up to y'all. Well, no, but if you, how did we record before? We just used a digital recorder, didn't we? We had a little speaker, but it didn't work very well, and no one could hear it as far as doing mm -hmm. minutes and all that. So we, the quality would be. Is that the one? Whenever we did the uh, FaceTime thing? No, we're talking about before Doug was involved, and we were mm -hmm. we were just doing the recordings, the sessions. Old school. And it sounded very cavernous, as I recall. So with regard to that, if we don't plan on making any decisions, we just have plan on having a workshop. We don't necessarily need to record a minute word for word, right? We don't have to have a recording of, of us discussing stuff. No. But if we do- You have to have but, minutes. But if we You have don't have any, to have the audio visual. But we still have the full power to make any decisions and motions as, as long as they're on our bulleted agenda well, list, right? If you all want to I would think the minutes are going to be very small, like, That's what I mean. yeah. like discuss landscaping, exactly. discuss this, and done. Like it, it should unless be, we make any choices. Unless we do something we don't. Right. Understand. Well, what I would suggest is that y'all simply leave this workshop as a workshop where there are no decisions made. Save your decisions for your meeting because two it occurs days, two right? days later. Okay. Um, so That's just fair. talk. Yeah, absolutely. And that absolutely. way you've got the time to talk. You know. And, and hash out whatever you want to. And then you once you get to the meeting on the 11th, then it's just an easy motion mm -hmm. yeah. and because you've already worked through all your background. Yeah, I think it's probably better we don't stream it and we just, it's more of a casual discussion. Oh yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it, yeah, and we don't need to, we don't need to minute down everything that's been said either. So with that said, do we have a plan on who's gonna do minutes? Are you just gonna record it? You're okay with that? You sure? So y'all don't need me? Well, that's what, yeah, that's what okay. I was trying to figure out. Yeah, that, I'm just, that's what I'm checking, because I'm going <laughs> to. But um, but as far as agenda goes, we definitely. Yeah, I'll do the agenda. Discuss. Wait, I'm just going to jot this down real fast. So, Fen. Mm -hmm. I'll go off Before. on the website, too. Yeah. But. Yeah, we, I'll, I'll end up with, uh, I'll probably just do both of them okay. and send them. So what, what were the things that we needed to discuss? We definitely need to discuss the fence with HOA. Um, You're really and, talking and budget, budget and landscaping. landscaping yeah. budget. That's it. We can say five-year budget thoughts because we could discuss general budget point. Well, the boat dock, like some big projects, um, pickleball courts. <laughs> <laughs> Newsletter. <laughs> That's an expensive one. Okay, so I just have three, the landscaping, budgeting, fence, fence, and the five-year budget. Fence, budget, landscaping, five-year plan. Right. That's plenty. That should cover. Was there anything yeah. else in here I mean, that we needed to? Because it's not a full blown. Yeah. No, just, and this is, this is giving you guys the opportunity to, to just 
talk through things without mm -hmm. the pressure of, of 17 things on your agenda. Right. Sounds good. We need to tell Scott. Oh, that's right. Yeah. No, I'm not okay. okay. We need to adjourn. Yes. So Important. line item number 12 is complete. Line item number 13 is adjourned. So I have motion that we adjourn. I will second. 10 30 and 40. 9 01 p.m. We're adjourned.